Gracias por escuchar y ver nuestro show renovandoriquezas.com. Búscanos y danos un like y cinco estrellas en YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn y cualquier otra red social en donde puedas encontrarnos. No somos responsables si esto no te funciona. Lee siempre las letras pequeñas. No creas en nada de lo que decimos. Los resultados varían dependiendo de cuánto estudies y hagas tu diligencia. Esto es solo para los que toman acción y sirve de entretenimiento. Hello everyone. Man, that sucked, dude. <laughs> It's we, like, we, we need to, you either need to drink some coffee or do something about it because that sounded like you're Man, your uh, your energies are like way down below. All you gotta do is say hi, everyone, like in school, right? Yes. You want me to try it again? You can. You don't have to. We're live. We got people watching us. Maybe if you get off your phone. I know. I know. I'm trying to turn it off. You got to. You got to turn it off, man. You got to turn off your phone from time to time. You know what I mean? So this is renovating riches. Your podcast and YouTube videos with. The star presenter, Mr. Dennis Rodriguez. And Ricardo Rosales. Today, we got um, we got uh, our first... One of your contractors? N well, he <laughs> used, to, used to be one of our contractors. Uh, but we got our first superstar in the house, Wait. Mr. Alex De La Torre. Thank you very much. Thank you for being here, Alex. Well, hey, I appreciate it. Thank you for your time. I don't know if I can meet up to that standard, but... Yes, you can. I'll take it. <laughs> and, it and it's our first all English uh, podcast because many people have been asking for it. So. Oh yeah, we've we've had a lot of requests for really? an English version. Yes. Wow. So uh, finally, we get down to English, and um, this is how this happened, guys. This is live. Uh, what do you call it? A real uh, reality Facebook TV or whatever. Um, reality show. Yeah. We were literally doing a video on my car coming from some rehabs we got going on uh, in um, in Houston. Nice car, by the way. Thanks. <laughs> uh, and, that's uh, the same as Cashmobile. That's the same as Cashmobile, <laughs> man. And, um, and we were shooting a live video just talking about real estate, and Alex just happened to put a comment, and we connected. We haven't talked to each other for a while. Right. And uh, I said, Alex, why don't you come over, uh, you know, and share the knowledge and share the wealth of knowledge that you got in uh, regarding real estate, you're not contracting and all of that. And what a better, better occasion to start our English uh, podcast in, uh, in um, live with Mr. Alex. So, Alex, tell us about yourself, man. What do you do? Who you are? Where you come from? Social security number, bank account. <laughs> the real one or the fake one? <laughs> you, hey, we, we take both. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, first of all, thank you guys for having me. Yeah, I, I, you know, I've known you for a very long time. Um, you mentioned contracting. So, part of my background is um, I've been rehabbing houses for hire, meaning I did it for other people for... Whew, since 2002 was when I first started Global Renovations. Wow. And uh, it, I was one of the first companies that did remodeling for investors only, kind of like you have now. Some of my friends own fast track remodeling, rent ready right. contractors, that stuff. Back then, there wasn't a lot of that. So yeah. I started that. <clears throat> then um, I think in 2004 or five, I, right before my daughter was born, I started, uh, I started Trinity Foundation Repair, which is... Uh, foundation repair company that I owned um, for till just about last year, and uh, we can still we can still recommend uh, Trinity Foundation. Yeah, yeah, just oh, so yeah. You know. absolutely. Yeah, no, I'm a I'm a user of Trinity. I use them too. So I use them too. Yeah, I, in fact, we were having a conversation earlier. I yeah. I, ju I use them for all my jobs. Yeah, I just don't own it anymore. Um, you know, and the guys that own it, Hugo, Hugo uh, Juarez, and and you know those guys over there, they're they're badass. I mean, Jose, manage. that's the one I used to talk Jose to. Jose is, is 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 actually the office manager, and he's still over there, and he's he's a rock star. I mean, everyone in that office is is personally trained by me, so they're they're definitely rock stars. But um, yeah, I, I ended up selling it last year, actually to Hugo, who was my employee, and uh, went full time into wholesaling now. Part of my background is I had been flipping houses since 2002, but I was only doing, you know, two houses a year, if that much. Um, part of it, I guess, was just a mental block. You know, yeah. it wasn't, it wasn't, I had the capacity to do it. I've been rehabbing houses. I mean, I, I remember at one point we were rehabbing eight houses a, in one month, which um, 
seems like it's not a lot, but I mean, we were doing no, full blown, complete remodels, like from bottom to top. So it wasn't just painting carpet like a lot of, you know, now when you get into rental properties, back then almost everybody was flipping. You know, it wasn't a lot of landlords. Uh, and the ones that were around, they usually had their own crews. So I was going after the, you know, especially if you're going to be a contractor and do it for hire, the bigger the rehab job, the more money you're going to make, right? Because right. you're, you're trying to make a 15, 20% yeah, spread on yeah, it. Definitely. So right. That's that's all I did for, well, like I said, till about 2012. I partnered up with a friend of mine named Stan Hallett, and we did that. Uh, <clears throat> I was actually rehabbing a house for him, and he asked me, he, he wanted to start flipping more houses, and uh, he was getting older and didn't have the you know time and energy to go. The around. drive, man, yeah. you gotta have a lot of drive. Yeah, and, and so yeah, it takes, that's, that's, <laughs> that's exactly it. what he brought me it, on it for. It takes a lot of energy yeah. too. Yeah. And he brought me on, and we started partnering up on deals, and I mean going after big rehabs, four or five hundred thousand dollar rehabs, wow. and you know we did about eight of those a year, and um, I think that's kind of when I met you. You yeah. actually came to one of our rehabs that we we had right. just done, and. Yeah, I got drunk there. I remember. I, just, I tell him that he's my favorite guy because he showed up with a twelve pack. I, I was like, "You could come anytime." <laughs> I, I I heard the story actually uh, Saturday after um, you know after we finished the um, the Facebook live. He told me the story. I don't know if people want to listen to it. It's kind of like funny, but um, but yeah, he told me about yeah. the. Uh, that meeting that went on uh, for like six hours. Yeah, yeah I don't know. I think we sent for another. We pack, we, right? well, we sent for like a twenty-four pack, you know, because we were just getting after it, man. You know, and out of rehab. You know, those, those are funny, always good meetings. What's funny is his wife was calling him the whole time. Yeah, and and she's like, they were going to the movies that night. Uh, yeah, we're so, going. Yeah, we're going because I was like, no, I can't, you there. know, I'll fall asleep on it, you know. So, yeah, and uh, so then from there, I, I went and, um, you know, I got to the point in life where through some, my, my mom got sick and my wife got sick, I needed to create income very quickly. And I mean a lot of money. It's not right. just creating money. So um, that's when I started looking at, at getting into wholesaling as a income generator. So for, for, you know, I guess we'll talk about it a little more in detail. Yeah. But, to me, wholesaling is not an investment. Wholesaling no. is a business, and so it is. It um, is. I, I started wholesaling business and just went balls to the walls and ended up. Uh, you know, our first month we did like fifteen deals, sixteen wow. deals. You know, a lot of a lot of partnering. So in that time period, I was still learning. Sharing. This. Yeah. Yeah. So I did a lot of partnering, and so I won't even pretend. I mean, we did five thousand dollar deals, two thousand dollar deals. It wasn't killing. Yeah, it, but, but when you're doing twenty, yeah, then you're yeah. Bring in 20, 30, 40 grand, you know, right. that you didn't have the last, uh, the month before. Right. So. And, and, and then I saw it worked. Yeah. You know, once I figured out that it actually works and you can run a business doing it, um, uh, that's when I started, you know, basically turning up the dial. So <clears throat> contrary to other people who are out there who are doing, you know, starting out no money, no credit, which is fine. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm just saying that wasn't where I started from. I had money and I had credit and I just went out and and, and you had a successful business and as I, well. And I had actually, you know, that's the, I think that's the biggest key is I knew, had business sense. So I learned I, I knew immediately what marketing meant. You had to pay, spend money to make money, kind of right. thing, right? Mm -hmm. So it, I went in, created a budget for marketing, turned up the dial, it worked. Saw that it worked. Saw the returns. Started turning it up more. So I kept reinvesting. You know my. So what we made, I didn't take that and go pay my rent with it. I ended up reinvesting. Well, you it. you got what you needed, right? No, I didn't Enough. touch anything. I, I, I will because you had a business. Yeah, so. exactly. So that's the thing. I didn't. I wasn't living off of that. So that that allowed me to reinvest and grow so fast. So people right. ask me all the time, and how did you do it? I didn't have to live off of right. what I made. So that allowed which me is to, pretty much similar to our case. Yeah. yeah. No, me. and and that's a very good point because um, Alex, most of the people that are you know our audience the people <laughs> are listening to this right now and we'll later uh look at the uh podcast um on our youtube channel most of the people have their own you know full-time jobs right they're, they're looking to learn other ways to make up some uh side income uh and eventually you know not everyone but some people have that dream of quitting their job one day and doing whatever real estate related or any other you know uh ways of raising capital um uh, full-time 
So this is a perfect example of, you know, what Alex is explaining. You know, he had his own business. His foundation business was going on. That I'm pretty sure you have to dedicate a lot of time to. And then on the bit, uh, on the side, you were doing this wholesaling and all the money was reinvested in the business to right. grow, it, grow it bigger, faster. Yeah. So, um, yeah, just take note, everyone, you know, that's listening out and, there. And by the way, if you're in, a, <laughs> in the Houston area and, and you want to learn from somebody that knows what this business is all about i personally endorse mr alex because i know he's he knows what he's doing uh, i don't know if he's in the business of teaching other people no but um i'll take the check and i'll make him teach you how about that <laughs> 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 no nah, but the truth is the truth is at some point um and like we were talking about this not long ago i was teaching people before now i'm at the point to where i'm like I don't have time, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, because now our business is growing and growing right. and growing, and we're not really taking a lot of new applications, uh, if you will. No, this is this is our way of giving out. Yeah, this right. is how we're giving back to the people that yeah. want to learn. Right. What we yeah, do. Yeah, and that's a great point because <clears throat> one of the reasons I don't teach is because I think that with when you take somebody's money to teach them, you have some certain duty and responsibility yes. to them, and you should, and you know, you should take it seriously because a lot of times people that might be their last ten thousand dollars, yes. that might be their last. So you know, I'll tell you, I mean, you can definitely reach out to me, and and, and you know, I'd be happy to answer, answer questions. Answer questions. Yeah, I mean, and you know me, I mean, I'll yeah. sit there, especially if you buy me a beer, I'll sit there for hours. Yeah. And tell you, I, there's nothing I love uh, more than after a twenty four pack. <laughs> you know, and I'll tell you the I'll real secret. Hey, he'll show you how to fix foundations from the ground up. Right. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. Or, or yeah. a pack. So I, 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 I talk to people all the time. People ask me questions, and, and I love to answer as much as I can. I by no means think I know any, right. everything. In fact, we were just talking about this. I, I spend thousands of dollars right now, hundreds of thousands. Uh, I'm sorry, tens of thousands. I am part of a mastermind called the uh, Boardroom Elite with Shen, uh, Ken Clothier and Sean Terry. Okay. And uh, I just got back from that, and I mean, it's how was it? Oh, it was wonderful. I mean, it was. That's that's where you hang, you you get to hang around with. Uh, like-minded people like my number one like-minded people number two uh people that are either at your level or yeah or higher or much or higher way, way yeah. higher yeah and just i would tell you i i don't ever want to be the smartest person in the room no because then that's why that's yeah. why dennis is my partner because he's smarter than i am yeah you know <laughs> and then we got one sitting back there yeah. so you know so. i'm the dumbest one out of, out of the bunch <laughs> i would say you're right but yeah i mean ultimately it's it's about if you you know i don't i If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. And I think, like you guys said, if you guys ever want me to come back and answer any, any topics, I'd be happy to share with you guys what I know. Um, but with that said, I, I don't charge anyone anything because right. I think there's responsibility behind that. Yeah, and, and not only that, it's like you said, uh, uh, a lot of the people that want to come into this business, they buy on to, um, I can do this with no money and right. broke. Yeah. And... And, and you can't. Let yes, me say, you can. What, what I would tell you, if you're going to do that, so because I don't want to kill anybody's dream, because the reality is you can, but you've got to work really, really hard. Yes. So if you have a full-time job, you have a family, you have, and you're not willing to sacrifice the time, I mean, and, and you know, I know you, because of the, the fact that you were um, on Facebook, and I, that's how I ran across you again, but... Um, You were working on Saturday, right? Oh, we work. I mean, so, we work Sundays too. Yeah, and so sure. people don't realize. I got a lead on Sunday. <laughs> Forget the barbecue. Yeah, I'm no, not I mean, going to church that day. I'm sorry. I am straight out to that deal. You, you, you pray on your way I, there. I, I will. I tell my wife. I say I will have my hands like this while <laughs> Dennis drives. Um, yeah. Because so, a call you get is ten, twenty thousand bucks. Yeah, you, know? you make, and that's another thing too. You know, one of the things that <clears throat> if you're gonna get into this business. I'm not saying don't go and pay for education. I'm saying pay for the right type of for education. For the right type of education. Because I know you were talking about that that Saturday, and yeah. that, that's exactly why I commented because I thought that what you were sharing was really good. Where if you're giving if you're giving good advice, it could save you thousands of dollars by making right. not not you know not so much because they take the learning curve out of it. You know right. the fact that you don't have to go out and make those mistakes. And you're right, it's a ten thousand dollar mistake. I tell people in my office, you know. My office not getting a signed contract or a piece of paper, yeah. or losing that paper, right? right? If you have an assignment, we sell everything on assignment. That paper is worth ten thousand dollars or more, or more. Many right? times, it's so a lot more. you're making ten thousand dollar mistakes. So if you think education is expensive, try not getting an try education. Try not having it. You know, yep. so mm -hmm. yeah, that's one thing that I remember from from Saturday. Um, but you know, I, I would, 
I, I think the nothing beats hard work. So going back to the no money, no credit, yep. if you drive for dollars, you know, and for those of you that don't know what driving for dollars is, it's where you drive around neighborhoods and look for vacant houses, write the address down, go find them on, on, har, on HCAT and mail them out a letter or, or, you know, skip trace them. I mean, it's, it's, you pay extra for that, but ultimately try to find them. A lot of times just knocking on the neighbor's doors, but that's how I started. That was my yeah. very first deal. In fact, I still to this day drive for dollars when I'm driving yeah, we, to an we, appointment. We, we did have, that. We, we you did that too. when? A Friday? Uh, <laughs> last week, uh, I spent uh, an entire day just driving for dollars and yeah. then sending out letters. So whatever you can do to get started, whatever you can do to put your foot inside, you know, and, and, and start doing something, just go ahead and do it. I mean, you don't have to spend, and, and going back to what you were saying, I, it really hurts me when I hear people saying, "Oh, I just spent twenty five thousand dollars on the seminar." I just spent. Yes. I mean, right now. I, you I, can you can do so much with that real estate related. Like take action with twenty five thousand dollars. You can do a down payment on a house. You can send uh, owner, I mean, owner you, finance yeah. deal. You oh know, my right. god! And and people are spending that. But amount of money on education before that, they get started, though. That most of the time don't lead them anywhere. I mean, most people, uh, there are cases. I've heard people that, yeah, it helped me. That's fine. But, you know, uh, in a room of 100 people, how many are going to go and do something after spending 25 grand? You wanna, Probably one or two. You want to, you know, so what I did, I'll tell you what I did. So I'm not going to speak because I've paid the $25,000. I mean, I've cut wow. that check before. Now, I will tell you, I got I got a couple of good things out of it that I made my money back, and, and I built relationships out of it, too, so that really helped. But I think that at that point, I was in a more advanced stage. I wasn't in the beginning. So if you're going back to the beginning and you're going to – and you have Oh, don't get me wrong. If if you got – I think Dennis's point is – the newbies. It's yeah. the newbies. Yeah. That's, that's what I'm talking. That's what we're talking about. Yeah, we're not, no, about the newbies we're are, not talking about the pro that that my that knows you know is is going a long ways and maybe having twenty five up twenty five thousand dollar investment because you're investing in yourself anyways and right. creating There's network. And right. network yeah. I, I'm just saying the newbie that don't even have the money. Sometimes they put it on a credit yeah. card. Yeah. It's like, come and, on. And I mean, it hurts to hear those stories. What I would say there, so this is where I was going to make my point. I've, I've paid the $25,000, but I wasn't in the beginning. What I did in the beginning was I actually partnered up with another wholesaler. Okay. You know, what, what I said is, okay, so let's work on the deal together. And actually, it was almost like he, he uh, we approached each other. It was funny, but it just kind of like. The God, universe, man. God puts it, it takes you, know, you there. God Boom. puts it in front of you when you need it. But um, Joe, Joe Tomaselli, my friend. We ended up, I paid the marketing, mm -hmm. so I paid for all the marketing, and the deals we would get, we split 50-50. Nothing um, wrong with that. Yeah, which is and, and, and so what I would tell you is I learned the whole way. He taught me the whole way. Um, you know, obviously, it was, it was based on the scenario that we were in, so depending on the case case by case that we were doing, we did like three or four deals together. So I got all my money back for the marketing right. and made Plus another 15000 But what I got was it. I got the validation. I got the fact that I knew that it worked. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I got, it's like, okay, this really works. I could, I could scale this up. And so <clears throat> I, you know, that's why, you know, to your point, if you have $25,000, go find someone that is already doing it and try to see if you can work your way into it. You know, you mentioned about, about coaching. I don't coach, but if people wanted to partner up, absolutely, I would absolutely bring do your that 25 because, grand and let's do a yeah, deal. That's, you know, that's what, no, yeah. that, that's how we coach. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. So we ran into somebody um, maybe last year, and he had paid thirty grand for. But don't get me wrong; this is not a person that, if 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 they, those were not their last thirty thousand. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, they, yeah, yeah, they, yeah. They were well yeah, off, yeah, good that, jobs, the that's, whole nine that's yards. That's very different. Yeah. Um, and I was like, dude, I wish when I started, because I was in his same situation. Yeah. That those seminars existed because. I learned the hard way. Yeah. I went and bought a house and all the problems came I did up too. on that one. I got stuck you know, with a couple of houses. Yeah. I got stolen, uh, money stolen from contractors. House demolished. House demolished <laughs> by the city. That one was funny. <laughs> I showed up to fix it and I was like, where's the house? Man? And, Am I in the wrong street? I'm like, and I'm looking lost, man. I was like, but I remember that house, you know, that one house in the corner where it's mine. 
gone. Wow. And it was just completely clear, right? Oh, wow. And here I am. So, so now you're in the building business, huh? <laughs> now, yeah. That forces you, right? Yeah. And that's how I that's got to become lemonade, a builder. Uh, yeah, lemonade yeah. out of lemons. Well, but no, I, actually, I, I'll finish the story on that one because that one, um, I didn't know what to do with a lot, man. And the lot wasn't worth this is in what you paid for it. this is in seven seven zero three three. Oh Lord. So I was like, now I got a seventeen thousand dollar mechanical lien on on it because the city tore it down, okay. and I got a lot that's probably worth back then it was maybe worth five grand. Wow. And I was like, what do I do? So I I literally I I started calling people like, hey man, what should I do? And they're like, dude, I don't know. That never happened to me or <laughs> anybody that I know, right? So. I became creative, man, and I actually gifted the the lot to the city. They didn't even know what to do with it. Cause oh, when, so when that way you don't have the lien. I yeah. gifted it. Yeah, fuck yeah. You know, so I'm like, hey, problem is yours now. And yeah. they're like, you can't do that. I said, yes, yes I, I can. can. I just told, I talked to my lawyer. Of course, I'm losing all my money, yeah, whatever yeah. I got into that. Right. But I, I was at a point to where... I didn't have the money to pay for that mechanical lien and then to go build another house and yeah, something. You cut your losses. And see, that's that's what I was talking about earlier, where if you if you think about it, the people that don't have the money to invest in their education or, the, you know, you can't afford to make those kind of mistakes. No. And so that's what, that's what you know, doing deals with other people or, and, and I'm sounding like I'm trying to sell you something. I, I, I don't do it. I'm just saying. Just send sure, us a check, guys. Just make <laughs> just sure. Just put you, Alex refer you. We'll, we'll take care of him. <laughs> yeah, that, but that's that, where, you know, you bring a lot of value yeah. to, to avoiding those kind of problems. And this is where I say, you know, if you think education is expensive, try try not getting one. Right. You know, in this case, that happened to you because you weren't on top of the lines I that no, were. I, yeah. I had no education. Well, and, and you didn't even know the house was probably on the condemned list for years. And yeah, you never knew to check. I had no it. idea. I didn't, you know. It was a, it was a, I laugh at it now. Uh, but at the time, <laughs> it was horrible, man. The <laughs> feeling on your stomach is like, <laughs> oh, it's like they just pulled something out. And now I'm like, oh, my God, I'm losing more money. And that, and I remember I was flipping another house not far from that one <clears> where <throat> my AC just got stolen, oh, the wow. AC unit. Then that didn't seem like a problem. <laughs> <laughs> and then the AC unit was like, oh, that's just an AC <laughs> unit, you know. Oh, it's, it's a just an AC unit. It's kind of like if you have a pain in your tooth. Yeah. You, know, you hit, your, hit, hit your toe or something yeah, so yeah. that you forget about your tooth. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, so the AC wasn't a problem anymore. Get a hammer <laughs> and, and yeah. you know. Yeah, so anyways, that's that's how I overcame that issue. I just cut my losses and moved on. Yeah. That's yeah. it, you know. That's all you can do, you know. And unfortunately, it's going to happen again. I, You know, we and I'm sure you guys, you know, can vouch for this, but I mean, me doing this for – this many years now, I tell you, there's not a year that we don't have something to cry about. You know, I we we are constantly under stress. I'm always. No, I think that it's all deadlines. on our case is like weekly. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> on mean, a weekly basis. And deadlines and getting this and getting that. I don't. I mean, I don't. I don't know of any any day that you say. In fact, when when I don't have stress, it feels weird. It is weird. Yeah, because right? you're like, like well, what, what, what do I do? What do I do? What what do, I do? I, what, you're trying to find. Am something I missing to get. something? Did I forget about something? Is there something that I didn't? You know, and so. Um, but you know, I will tell you, it's a very gratifying business. It's a, it's one of those things that <clears throat> you get into it, and it could change your life. It could ch- yeah, yes, you can. And, and, and I think the important word here that uh, we have heard Alex say it time and time again: it's business, business, this business. And people need to understand that once you get into this, it is a business. You you have to treat it like a business. Yeah, if you treat it as a hobby, then things like what happened to me will happen to you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Which is, for me, was an investment, some yeah. hobby thing that yeah. I did on the side, you know. You treat it like a hobby, it's going to be a very expensive hobby, and yes. you'll probably not be doing it too long. So you rather oh, go know. and oh, man, learn I, how to golf or something. A lot of clients <laughs> that we had, you know, they, they, you know, one of the, having the foundation company, a lot of the calls we would get was people had the house under contract to sell. This after they rehabbed it, right? And most of the time, they put twenty, thirty thousand dollars to rehab it. And they haven't fixed the foundation. They call us for the foundation and say, "Hey, man, the bank won't finance it because there's a problem with the foundation." Wow. And we show up. You know, whenever it was a 10, 10 piers out on the exterior, no big deal. You could do that and repair it. And yeah. But when the inside was wrong, dude, we we had to rip the floor out. 
Uh, I mean, usually you lift it all the. Sometimes if they put a new roof, it would pop the roof. Yeah, it will. It was or a, it crack buckle yeah. drywalls. I mean, yeah. cause and it was to start out. It was you know a four thousand dollar foundation repair, and then add all the remodeling you just paid for to yeah. redo it. Again. Remodel the remodel. <laughs> you yes. gotta remodel, remodel the remodel. The remodel. Yeah. That's why I start with a foundation. Yeah, that's, that's the first thing I mess with. I don't care <laughs> about. I don't care if it's raining inside the house. That foundation is getting fixed first. Yep. Yeah, and that's that's <coughs> the lesson for today, and especially coming from Alex, who run a foundation business. Whenever you buy a house, especially in Houston, and and anywhere we can in Texas, and we can talk about the other areas because I know Alex. Anywhere uh, in Texas. So anywhere in Texas, just so get just so you know, there is two types of houses in Texas: that ones that have a foundation problem, and the ones that will have a foundation problem. Right. So so <laughs> so. <laughs> First thing you do is take a look at the foundation because if you start fixing anything else, why don't we talk about what what, what do you look for, Alex? When when as a as a as a general contractor from uh, that own the foundation company, what are the signs that you spot? Not from not from an investor because investors look for cracks, they things that are very obvious. But apart from the investor being the foundation. One of the biggest foundation companies in Houston for for a Texas, long time. We, at Texas. one point, we were the second largest in Texas. What are the things that you look for when you look into a property and you say, "Okay, this property has a foundation issue"? You know, so you you, you this is kind of like when people ask me, "Man, how, how did you, you know? How do you make money in real estate?" Um, it's really there's no silver bullet, right? So, so the same to answer I'll give you for the foundation repair. I look for the exact same things that newbies should look for. Okay. Which is the cracks on the walls. Right. Make sure the doors, you know, don't hit. If if you look at the doors and you can see the door kind of leaning sideways. Yeah. Another big one is if you look at the cabinet doors, they should all line up straight. And if you right. have one that's higher than the other. Um, you know, just you, a lot of times you could feel it. You know, you can walk oh, yeah, on yeah. it and you can the, feel actually that. this building has a foundation problem. Oh, does it? Yes, sir. <laughs> so, but at know, that point is, I would say obvious. Some people don't, but you know, when you can feel it, it's like it's really bad. That's true. <laughs> you know, and, and it's a good point that you know, by, by the time you feel it, it's already too bad. Right. So if you feel it, you're you you know, it's not you should question it. At that point, it's already too bad. But another really good sign is if you look at windows. You know, if you take the window and you got brick ledge, when they first make them, they make them so tied together that. You shouldn't have any gap, and then you show up, and there's a gap there. Oh, okay. That gap in the window between the window and the brick. And the brick. That's a problem. Mm -hmm. And so, because you know, if you think about it, they make them wet, wet, you know, watertight, where they're not. There shouldn't be a gap. So that's one of the, it, and you cannot hide that. Yeah. So that's one of the big ones. Unless there's like a ton of caulking that they kept well, putting, like same through the years, you see. Yeah, different, but different now you're gonna get a thicker line. You <laughs> yeah, know, so, that, so now you know that's exactly what. what they got white caulking and then beige caulking and. <laughs> another, another, you know, you mentioned that too. Another way to look at, it, especially if you have brick, is if there's if you look at the grout lines and the brick or the mortar lines. And they go like. Well, that's that's if they're cracked. But what if they fixed it? Uh huh. There's two different colors. Right. If you pay attention to the colors, that's another way to look at it. But um, you know, now you know why I paint the brick houses, right? <laughs> you can't tell. Yeah. Because the, the problem is, I fix the foundations, right? So I get a foundation fixed, fine. Then I gotta fill on on the cracks. Yep. You know, fix it back up or whatever. But then the own the new owners the, or the new buyers will hire an inspector. That will go out there and we'll see the difference in color and we'll say, the house got a foundation problem. Yeah. And even though the problem is being fixed, now the new buyers, like, is they got on the back of their head, man, that, that, that foundation is not good. So even though we disclose everything, hey, this is everything we did through the rehab, there's not an inspector. But we lost a buyer like that because the inspector went and... and More uh, than one, I would say. Yeah. The, he, the guy goes and says... They should have raised this house because it was a pyramid. They should have raised this house six more inches, and and uh, come to find out. So I would have asked the inspector what qualifies you as an engineer. But that's exactly what I, my question was. I was like, because he's like, well, because if you got a if you got a a, a plumbing issue, then you can't get under to fix no it. There's no access. I said, well, try doing that on a slab foundation, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so. You know, but the thing is, the buyers, they're not educated like we are. Right. So they will they will pull away. Yeah. As, you know, they'll get so scared. Mm -hmm. And the inspector is getting paid anyways. 
right. is getting paid regardless they buy or they should do a clause on on the the real estate deal where if they don't buy they get half of the pavement or whatever you know yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah they, so they have to inspect her <laughs> yeah because on that case they're not being objective you right. know well and uh, you know a little tip that i'll give you guys well to your to your uh your audience <clears throat> being from a from a general contractor and also being a, a rehabber um is i started learning to leave stuff behind you know stuff that that real obvious stuff that like gfci's or the water heater needed to be replaced i wouldn't replace it if the ac needed to be replaced i wouldn't replace it that i knew i had budgeted already and i, I was gonna do it but i leave it behind on purpose because it just made it easy for the inspector to earn his pay right okay if, if you think about it they're they're getting paid three four five hundred dollars to do an inspection and if you if you clean the house up to the point where they don't they don't find anything, what they're gonna do is dig deeper and find shit that they. Oh, excuse me. No, you got stuff. it. It's okay. This is this is actually uh, PG thirteen. PG, no, this is twenty one. <laughs> so we're good. So leave it to where they find stuff that you know. It keeps their attention. Well, makes it makes them look like a hero to yeah. feel you their were, report. That's right. That's right. And it makes them look like a hero, and it makes it to where you knew you were gonna do it anyway, right? And it's not like a shock when you get it, and you'd be surprised the stuff that you can get away with. I but, like that. I, I've never heard that. And, and oh, you've never heard that before? No, oh, I've yeah. never heard it, but uh, yeah, it makes we, sense. We, 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 I mean, we try to fix everything. And, and that, and you know, yeah, now that doing? now that Alex mentions that, I think that's exactly what happened at that house. Because that house, the moment I walk in, and, and this is a house that from the moment that we, we um, Ricardo <coughs> purchased it, I never put step in the house i never saw the rehab because it was out there in the middle of nowhere and at that time i had my job and i couldn't just drive around but when i step into the house to take pictures to list it i call ricardo and i say i think this is the best rehab i have seen you guys do the house was amazing but that's, i think that's exactly what happened the yeah, inspector yeah. walks in and he's like okay what am i gonna put in my report i i've got nothing so they start looking for yep. stuff like Oh, the foundation should have been to. I mean, come yeah, on. They do. You know, and that's. You think about it. You know, so that, look, no, I, think, I Think about I agree. it from the standpoint, you know, whatever you're doing this, you know, a lot of times the hard part is to figure out what the other person's going through. Right. right? And so if you stand and look at it from the, inspe from the inspector's point of view, he still has to look good and make sure that he earned his pay. He can't walk in and say, man, Ricardo and, and you know, Dennis, they're doing a phenomenal job. Just buy the house. They can't say that. They're uh -huh. getting paid to find stuff, right? Yeah. So when I started doing that, I mean, it was an instant change. I mean, it just started getting so much easier. Had less deals blow out. And, you know... <clears throat> It's important, and for us being contractors or, you know, us doing the work, I used to get offended by them pointing stuff out to me, right? Well, fuck it. Then I'll, don't let them yeah. buy the house. Let yeah. them, I'm not going to sell it to them anymore. And then I realized it's like, wait a minute. It's not personal. Don't, don't take yeah, it personal. Don't yeah. take it personal. And the second part is, you know, if you do – one other thing I started realizing was – not to sink all the budget, leave some money behind because they always find something. Mm -hmm. You know, look at it from the standpoint of the real estate agent, right? The, the one representing the buyer, he's got to make his pay too. Mm -hmm. So I started doing it where, you know, I would I would always leave stuff behind and make them look like heroes also. So by us not, you know, they would come back. Well, the AC is not working. Okay, well, you know, what's the cost to do an AC? And then we would kind of go back and forth and agree on a number. Okay, I'll tell you what, I'll credit you that for the AC. Yeah. Or I okay. Yeah, and we'll then the realtor will go to their client. Hey, I was able oh to get God, you yes. a two thousand dollar discount so you can fix the AC. Yes, uh, I get it, and it makes total sense. Yep. I've, I've I've never heard of that. Yep. So so started doing that, and and that was a Ricardo. No more water heater fixes before we list. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Well, I did in the last <laughs> house. We had to go do a freaking water heater conversion and all kinds of stuff, man. That one that had the propane gas uh, gas tank in the back. The one oh, on. yeah 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 but that was uh yeah that was that we did that but not on purpose yeah we did that not in purpose <laughs> they put a uh liquid uh what is a natural gas water heater but the house had a propane, propane gas. gas yeah <laughs> wow <laughs> yeah so when they i got that water heater somewhere <laughs> so <laughs> and this is stuff i mean now we laugh because you have to I oh mean, yeah But at that moment, it was like, uh, I was like, you, did you get that call. It's like, Ricardo, um, the guy can't connect the propane gas because you bought a natural gas water heater. 
it's like, yeah. it, it was, yeah. Oh, I can give you Things that thousands happen. of stories like that, you know, so. Yeah, we, we're getting there. We're getting a lot of stories. We're getting stuff about water heaters, um, AC units, that buyer we lost over. This is just in the last month or so, you know, buyer we lost over a foundation because we didn't raise it six more inches. Mm -hmm. And I was like, If you what? can, go back to that house and undo things. Like, go take strike plates off the doors. You know, when, you know what strike plates are? It's where the door latches. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Take those strike plates off. Take the GFC out. Uh, leave a couple lights where the, 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 lights, the light bulb's not working, right. that kind of stuff. And you'd be surprised how much faster you'll go through that cell. Yeah, I got a house just like that leave, right now. If you leave stuff, <laughs> if you think we'll probably it. have to do it. I know what I, I know which house you're thinking in. No, and I got the other one that is listed. Um, that uh, that some of the lights are not working and just leave just them because like that. Of the light bulb, you know, they're just you know burned out or whatever. Yeah. Hey, but guys, you guys are you know you're getting it from a pro, a general contractor that has been doing it for a has long been time. doing this. A lot longer than I my myself. Actually, Danny started right around the same time. Yeah, but the, there was a, a big gap. There was a there was a, a too long of, of a break. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so it don't count. <laughs> exactly, it doesn't count. So but but okay. So fast forward, you get rid of um, <coughs> of your general contracting businesses and and your foundation company, and uh, and now you you're up to fast house buyers. Fast house buyers. Fast house what buyers. do you do with fast fast house buyers? So we're a wholesaling company. Um, I I started fast house buyers the later part of 2014, um, and we did a few deals in the, in the last three months of 2014. That's kind of when I partnered up with Joe okay. and stuff. And then 2015, I. I uh, You know, that's when I spent a little a little bit of money on training and, and besides what I learned from Joe, so I that's why I say I, I, I spent money on it so I don't know. Oh, you didn't people. spend it, you invested it. I invested it. That's a good point. Uh, that's an investment. And so <clears throat> once I, I learned that it actually worked, I went out and started getting m more training, more geared towards a business, a running a, a real estate yeah. business as opposed to just an investment. Right. And uh <clears throat> bent two thousand I mean 2015, basically January, I turned up the dial on the marketing, and we ended up doing, like I said, 15 or 16 deals in January, and we did, um, so that was in 2015, and then in 2016, I ended up uh, 131 houses we, we wholesaled. Wow. That's a lot of houses, man. Woo. And so, pretty big, yeah. And where's... Where's your market? I mean, are you focused in Houston no. or are you doing Dallas, San Antonio? No, we're already doing San Antonio. We've done, I, I can tell you, we pretty much are open to go anywhere. I've done houses in Beaumont, Victoria. Um, I've gotten deals in Corpus Christi, but I haven't, I didn't move it. Um, Ricardo loves Corpus. I, yeah, I tried right. to sell my house. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, he didn't want to buy it. <laughs> he was one of the ones I called. I, I, don't, think, hell no, I don't, don't think, think you can there, you get please. him there. Not even, I mean, I, I don't know. You're not going to get him to drive down there. Um, <laughs> I can drive through it. You through, know? Yeah, but not but down to. St yeah. I was in the Navy, and I was stationed in Corpus, man, and th those were some four uh, rough years. Bro. Oh, were they? So <laughs> the day I left Corpus, I said, I am never coming back here. Nothing against Corpus or the people of Corpus. It's just my time yeah. while I was there. Yeah, it was tough, rough, right? Yeah. Four years of uh, tough experience. Exactly. Yeah. So, so I, I feel the same way about Baltimore and You know, I Baltimore's a market we're getting into. Really? DC. Oh yeah. my. So you, oh you I was going to finish telling you that we're now touching Dallas. We uh, need, we need to talk after this um, podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and I just started our marketing and I put up our website in Atlanta. And through the relationships I built through the mastermind, we're going to Tampa Bay. I was asking you about Miami because we're, we're going to Ma we're going to Miami. And um, you know, but when I say Tampa, I mean all of Central, Te Central right. Florida. Right, we got uh, we got somebody that is part of our group, um, and he's doing um, several flips in the several, Tampa Bay Several, several in Tampa, a few in Miami. Um, I'm gonna. Uh, he's actually gonna be on the show uh, sometime this week, and um, Tampa is a, a market very similar to Houston. Oh yeah, especially, the, you know, one of the things I learned, especially going to San Diego. Sorry to interrupt you, but if you're from Houston only we get it yeah and what I'm about to explain this but 
you you get people from other parts of the country, like in San Diego where I was at, or I grew up in San Francisco, or you know Baltimore, or you go anywhere else, even Florida, for example, they can't even think about driving for an hour. No. Now, if you if you go in Tampa, people in Tampa don't do deals in Orlando, and it's literally one hour away. Yeah, yeah. And here in Houston, I mean, we literally. And I, I know you. <laughs> the two hour drive. We can like, do. We can. We can do three Facebook lives. You know. <laughs> two hour drives between one appointment and the yeah, next. I mean, exactly. I've been, I've we have. We have breakfast right next to a property, then lunch next to the other one, and then dinner when we are getting close. Yeah, to but, but one of them is, is like we drive and drive and drive. Forty fifty minutes away from. Uh, Forty fifty miles. I'll away put it to you this way. Right? Last year, I put fifty thousand miles on my truck and twenty thousand on my car. Yeah. I believe that. 70,000 miles in between those two. I believe that. Yeah, and, and people in other parts of the country don't don't see that. They don't want to do that either. They don't want to drive. And I, I don't, don't blame them. You know, I, hold on. I don't blame them. Well, you know, it's, I, uh, I agree. <laughs> if I didn't have to do it, I, did it, I wouldn't do it. But I enjoy driving. I'm one of those crazy guys too. that likes driving. Me too. So. And, and I was going to say that I've done it for so long, I don't know any different. That I mean, I usually start my... I live in Cyprus, so I start in Cyprus, go to Conroe, end up and you know, go down to... Cause Freeport. I have a flip. <laughs> well, not, yeah. not that far, but I've gone down to... Um, Berlin. Uh, yeah, I'm thinking of uh, Seabrook area. Okay. Yeah. From there, go all Clear the way... Lake, Seabrook. Yeah, get down to Clear Lake, then from there, go all the way to Sugarland for an appointment, and then try, try to get back home in Houston five hour traffic or five, five o'clock traffic yeah oh no no and that, you know, that's a two hour drive back <laughs> and, home right? and that's so. how you end up at the bar right because <laughs> <laughs> so, you're like need man, to make a quick pit stop hope, yeah I if anybody hope. wants to get some free advice on real estate just buy me a beer and uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. five <laughs> o'clock happy hours somewhere just, between oh, Cypress got, and Sugarland yeah. <laughs> call, call around 430 hey Alex where are you at I'm in Sugarland oh man I'm just down the road let's go meet that's right um, but yeah, so that's what we're expanding into other markets. Uh, uh, my goal is to have it where we're doing deals nationwide, and um, I've been lucky to to have a really good team in my office. And and you know, one thing I learned that a lot of people don't think about, you know, I because ultimately it's a mental block, right? Yes. Think about it. So, and you know, you're, you're a negotiator. You're really good at it. How many houses could you have bought on the phone? I think we could have bought every. Almost every Almost single one. Because the one thing you need is motivation and equity, right? Yeah. Well, we figured that out. And what I did was brought in really good negotiators, mm -hmm. and we're buying everything before we even go out there. So we have the house under contract before we show up to the house. So all I'm doing now is just sending out field agents to take pictures as a contractor, so to speak, take pictures. To do your estimate of repairs. Give us an idea of the repairs. Yeah, they send them back. And then basically once we have that, we end up going out and just uh, sending the buyers. So talking about systems. So this is a person that completely understand what systems mean oh, yeah. to scale up your business. Because I am not going to say it's different than when you have systems on your foundation company. You have to set up a system yeah, for oh yeah, it. You Otherwise, to, you would have never been able to scale up so, so yeah, big. Yeah, especially how big everywhere. it was. You yeah. know, having offices all over Texas, I mean. Yeah, we had 60 employees at one point. Wow. So now you you went from foundation to a completely different business, which is wholesaling. Yep. They're, they're Somehow they're related. They're tied into each other because if you're going to wholesale a property, you want to tell your investor the major things that they need to do. You know, that right. way they can get a good estimate. Right. But you don't have to fix the foundation for them. All you say, hey, he's got a foundation problem. You got to go figure it out. Right. Um, so you take basically a system you got in place in a company. Then you start your other business, which is the wholesaling side. And then you say, you know what? Let's scale this thing up. Let's set up a system in place. And now let's go big or go home. And you're going big because you're already going to Atlanta. You're going to all kinds of places. And, and just so you guys know what he's doing right now, It's basically replicating another <clears throat> system he had before, but with a different twist. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you have to understand that to do that, you need to be really niche. -y. You need to yeah. have a real big niche. Yes. And so I, I understand. I understood real quickly that I don't want to be a wholesaler to everyone. Right. right? And and again, I think a couple properties that I had that I just ran across you didn't work out to your mm -hmm. model. But what what and the reason I bring that up is because of where you're buying yeah you you guys are also very niche you like certain areas yes so we what 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 i realized was the right the type of buyer that i'm looking for the, the person that i want to serve 
is the landlord, right? Mm-hmm. But not just the landlord. It's the landlord that doesn't have time to go out and find properties. and, and, and But they're looking for properties in the suburbs or three twos, brick. They want the house in Katy, yeah, in Sugarland. Exactly. Land, those, those, you know. and, and what's yeah. sad about that is those those landlords are going to get educated on buying houses at 70% minus repairs, which is great. That's exactly what you should do. But that's if you're marketing for it. And right. then you're competing against me at the door. Right. So <clears throat> when we sell, we're selling to people that are looking to, to build long-term wealth, that understand that buying the house today, you don't need to get rich today. It's coming down the road, and you buy it in a good area that always will be occupied. You, you mm-hmm. don't have vacancies, and that you can turn out and, and end up, you know, it, it's a long-term play. Plus, right? it's a win-win situation, man. Those, yeah. those guys that are buying properties off of you, they don't want to put all the hours you're putting in to go find right. a deal. Right. Yeah. And, and, and you know, they... Uh, well, and, and just, I mean, I had this conversation on my way here, and you guys can vouch for this. What, I mean, how hard is it to get a deal nowadays? It used to be where before, you, we were talking about this I will, the MLS, I right? I would pick and choose deals, man. I would just go like this. Like, actually, back in 2011, I think you said. Earlier than that, 2008, 2009, I would pick and choose yeah, from oh, yeah. wholesalers. From yeah. wholesale, yeah. so you get all these wholesale deals on the market, and back then a wholesaler is making three grand. Oh yeah, three we, grand. yeah. I remember. You know they're they're not <laughs> day in and day out. Yeah, it's in and out, in and out, yeah. in and out. You quicken, you know, but you're turning a lot of product. ten houses mm-hmm. a month. Yeah, a lot of product. Right, that's not the case today. No. If you're if you're turning ten houses a month, oh, you're a rock star. You're a rock star. Yeah, you're a rock star. Um, for the most part, most of the wholesalers that are getting into the business. They get a property under contract, and it takes them 30 to 60 days to offload that one property Yeah. Um, while they get the next one. And so a lot of people fail. You know, I, I would say the failure rate on this business is quite high. Yeah, and, and, and part of it is yeah. not understanding the velocity of money. Right. right. Not understanding that you need money to make money mm-hmm. and being able to. So, you know, getting hung up on one property is not the way to do it. And mm-hmm. so most people that are getting into it, and I realized really quickly, you get in love with that property because it's your first deal and, that are, and, and you know, you want to try to make, you know, you hear everybody making $10,000 every deal. And so in the beginning, I was making two, three, four thousand dollar $4,000 deals, right? Yep. And it was because I needed to gain experience. Now, thank God, I'm at the point where if we don't make $10,000 for office, we won't even touch it. Oh, yeah, yeah. But you got to understand. <clears throat> yeah, because you got overhead. You got things that right. you got to look after that. But you got to understand something that I'm very conscious that I can't do that on a large scale in Houston because there's so much competition. Too many. This is one of the toughest markets. Oh, it's it's probably... The, the, I'd say yeah, Phoenix well, is number one and Houston is number two. Phoenix I, is number one. I, I didn't know that. Yeah, uh, I learned that today. Hardest, Phoenix hardest real estate markets out there. Wow. And the second yeah, one is... All the people... We get people from California, New York... All these people looking into Houston people from because Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> oh, because they it's, couldn't figure it they, out in Phoenix. They, they're they're starting to invest here too. People wow. from China, you know, you, you you get you know people from abroad yeah. investing money in Houston, buying these you know multi uh, multi residential, I mean yep. uh, apartment yep. complexes, and Houston is a tough market. It's you know, there's so many people trying to. Get well, you got, you got a lot of big names here, man, and and um, by any means we're on that list. Um, at least us, we we're on a different list. But um, <laughs> no, no, I'm not lying, man. There's people out here that uh, that got 900 rentals that oh, yeah. I know of. Oh yeah, no, definitely. And they, but they, the way they found them was through wholesaling. So they became wholesalers. They put all these properties under contract. Then they decided to go rehab them, and then they decided to keep them for rentals. So. Um, then there, you got you got like four or five major either harmony lenders and and that got different divisions like the division of the harmony lending and then they got the real estate side and the wholesaling the side. Holding, yeah. So they got a whole all in house yeah. package kind of deal, uh, which I'm gonna mention. I'm just gonna give you some uh, free advertisement uh, for uh, Jet Lending and, and them. Eddie the, Gant, the, yeah, Eddie Gant and, and, and those and Johnny Hayes and, and, Johnny Hayes and, and all those guys, man. They they got the whole thing. Yeah, that's why I actually they're good got started with. Too, by the way. Oh, great people! Yeah. They're very good. Yeah, people. great people. And every time I see it in, and I sit somewhere and they're talking, I keep my mouth shut. And you uh, know what's you know what's interesting is how this business allows you to have different ways of making money because, you know, just like I said, I'm real niche and I'm going for a certain type of property. I'm looking for a certain for a type of 
buyer and I'm looking for a certain type of seller and you know you know you you mentioned earlier you guys do foreclosures I don't chase foreclosures yeah everybody else does or not, not that it's a bad thing it's just that's not what I'm looking for and so you know when you talk about Eddie and them they they got they decided to be giants in this yeah. in this market and they are I mean they they're, are they're they're, big. they're, they're, they're giants I, I think personally they're the biggest ones um I, I know of a couple people more that are bigger than but they might they might oh, not be great. on the spotlight, you know. What yeah, I'm saying? and and see the thing about Eddie, one of the things that you realize about Eddie and and, and Johnny is, they give. They, yes. they Like you mentioned, you, if you if you sit around them or you get around them, they just give you information. I mean, a lot of really good information. I've actually asked Jetty, Eddie before, like, man, do you realize the amount of information you're giving is like people are charging for this stuff? Yeah. You know, and the, so yeah, you're right. I, I get around him and I just shut up and listen because yeah. yeah. Listen. Um, mm -hmm. But with that being said. You can go a direction of, you know, where you're just buying and holding everything, you know, and you can make a lot of money that way. You can go out and do, I know a friend of mine who does a lot of uh, owner finance deals. He buys and turns around and sells owner finance. Now he's getting into land and going out buying, you know, two, three hundred acres, developing them into 10 acre lots and selling those off. So there's a lot of ways to do money in, in this business. You just, one of the key things is you have to educate yourself. Educate yourself. You have to have some, you know, balls and go out and do, yep. you know, be, be willing to risk a little bit. And then the other thing, too and be is, willing to lose some too, because you're not going to win them all. Yep, and that's what I mean with by the risk factor. And the other one is just to be, you know, persistent. You have to stay after it because just like if you would have given up when they <laughs> demolished no, that I, house, I wouldn't was, be here right now, right? You know, but you you get better every 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 you know. And I see all these motivational quotes put it out there in Facebook. Um, you know, it's they're for a reason is because you almost have to self motivate yourself to keep on going because it's motivation hard. is like taking a shower man you gotta take it every day yeah it's it's, you know? it's really hard i mean i tell you it's a lonely business and uh and i say a lonely business because a lot of times you're out there and and you're just having to make decisions on the spot and yeah you know it's not like you can walk into your boss hey man i got this house can you approve it you have to make a gut call exactly you know mm -hmm. you so, do you make the offer you don't make the offer do you walk away or not walk away we don't we rarely walk away from contracts um we do the best we can to close on them yeah um if we don't close on them it's because they got something weird on title that can be cured right and, and, and i'm the same way nothing you can do about it no no um Fact or, or the seller dies literally the day before closing. the day before closing and then <laughs> that happened to you guys that happened, that to, happened me. to us <laughs> and you guys gotta go you guys, you guys got to go get a cleansing or something. Hey, no, we you guys got a lot of. Oh, that, that's that's hey, another. I've never had <laughs> Alex. That's another story. So but, if you uh, guys out there, anybody that knows a good curandera, you guys, oh, <laughs> you're looking right there. My mother. Oh, is that right? I, oh, br you know, I bring her from Florida. She lives in Florida, and we bring her to clean every house while we go to rehabs. And the we, office. We got all the, the bad stuff out of it, man. And you know, and I'm, we clean the office. I'm talking shit, but you know the the you ever seen the Saint Joseph? I I you I wa just want to you want to I just you see my I car? just buried one today. Uh, I put I put one in every house. People laugh at that shit for me, like dude, it works. I, you I know? just buried the house one. I had in Cyprus where I used to live. Um, this is the story. I, I was living on that on that house. I bought on foreclosure actually, brand new, and they they got the builder got foreclosed on back in 2007 when everything started going to, uh, down south. And um, we lived there for a few years. So we decided to move here to Katy. And we put our house for sale. And once I got an offer, I accepted it. And we went straight up and found the builder and started building here in Katy. And um, on, during that process, the buyer, and this is me being uh, um, naive back then, right? Or a newbie, I didn't know much about real estate. My realtor wasn't telling me much either. You know, he was just doing the transaction. The buyer who put a contingency that if he didn't sell his house, he had to back out of the contract. He had the right to back out of the contract. And <laughs> even though I might have read it and agreed to it, it was not right. hanging around the back of my head. So I accepted the offer, and, and then the buyer goes, would you be willing to lease me the house while I get rid of mine? And I said, absolutely, I'll, I'll, I'll listen to you, and then we close. And they moved in, and I went and got me an apartment and while I was building the next house because I wanted to get my money and pretty much mm -hmm. wait until my house was, was ready. Well, his contract fell through. He had to go back to his house, and now my house was vacant. 
So I had to go back to the house and rehab it again. Not rehab it, but like touch yeah, up paint enough. and clean up and all of that. Um, but now I had to pay that mortgage. I had to pay my rent. And I had a lot of money sunk. So you're too. a motivated seller, huh? <laughs> I was motivated as hell. You know, now when you say that, and I don't want to cut off your story, but I think that's why you're a good buyer. That's why you're a good negotiator. And I will come back to that. Well, moment. and then, so, that, you know, all those things happen. And now... I got a house that's vacant that's like two thousand dollars a month the mortgage, and then I got my rent, which is another two grand, and then I got the uh, all the money sunk into the new construction. So I really had no money, man. I I, I was like I was making money, but I've the check there. the check was like pff, I have more month at the end of my money. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? So, man, I became very, very creative. Anyways, I started going through the internet and and. Um, my broker's real, uh, my realtor's broker calls me up one day. I think he was drinking or whatever. He's like, "Hey, Ricardo," I said, "What's going hey, on?" You know, all his stories have people. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Every <laughs> single story involves hey, alcohol. Man, not a, I have not heard a good story that started with a salad. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so so he's like, this is like no, literally, this is a, a Saturday night. He calls me up, "Hey, man," and I, I think he was partying. You know, he's a, he's a, an entertainer. Have you ever heard of Saint Joseph? And I was like, Saint Joseph, like you mean like the saint? And he's like, Yeah, Saint Joseph. No, it's a beer I'm drinking here. <laughs> no, I, dude, I don't. Oh, we I, got Saint Arnold. Coming, <laughs> hey, I'm telling you, coming from this guy, I don't know, you know. So I'm like, I know who Saint Joseph is, but what about him? And he's like, Google it. Go on the internet. Those are like they sell these little statues on on the internet that you can get and. And um, you bear it upside down, and and it's promised that you will sell your house. Yeah. And I was like, all right, man. Hey, at this point, Alex, I'm, I'm like eight anything. months into it. I'm like, I'm going to try it anyway. Say Joseph, Mary, Jesus, put everybody I in was, there. I was calling <laughs> everybody, man. I had to call everybody. I was <laughs> saint hunting. And, and the three, mag you know, the three magic men. <laughs> Literally, I got my Saint Joseph, like, on a Tuesday. I went and did my thing, read the prayer, the whole nine yards. Next day, yep, three offers on the house. Yep. <laughs> yeah, we do now. I mean, I just buried one today uh, at one house that has been in the market for like two weeks. If, if you know, and Ricardo bought, bought a whole bunch of them, so we're gonna be doing a lot. Oh, of I buy them. Hey, by oh. the way, guys, if <laughs> I, I, yeah, I buy them by the dozen. Too. I buy them by the dozen. <laughs> So, hey, we he, bury he, every single goes, one of them. He goes to Costco and buys the family pack. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> Give me a family pack, and I want the prayers too, okay? <laughs> the little, they put the little cards. Yeah. But that's what got me out of that bind. I know. And I, trust I, me, I know. My wife and I could not believe that we got three offers the very next day we buried that sign, Joseph. Yep. So, so, yes, it works. It works. Yep. Um, you know, going back to what I was going to point out, I don't want to interrupt your story because it's a good one and I and I do it too but you know anybody who wants to go out there and learn how to buy houses buy them cheap learn how to negotiate to, to you know unless you're standing in the seller's shoes you don't know yeah. how to deal with them yeah. right and so you're in there trying to explain them numbers and the numbers just go over their head if you've never been a motivated seller it doesn't have to be a house if you've never been a motivated seller, then you will never relate to them. Yes. Right? And going to your point, I mean, I've been a motivated seller multiple times, right? I've been I mean, I've, I mean, more I've, than multiple yeah. times. So, <laughs> you, know? you know, that's why I think that I have an edge in how we can actually buy houses over the phone because what we do is we relate to them. We yes. figure out. Yeah, you create that rapport too, right? No, because I don't, it, I don't create a rapport. Well, but it no, happens automatically. Dude, I'm telling you, the yeah, reality right. is this whole rapport thing, and people tell me that all the time, and we just had this big discussion in San Diego about the same thing. I'm like, dude, we have 15 minutes on the phone with them. You, we don't have time to build rapport. What we do is we find the reason that they're calling. Okay. When you figure out the reason that they're calling, and you realize that ultimately it comes down to pain. And we find what that pain is, and we figure out the way to solve that pain, and we explain to them. So here's the pain, and and you know here's how we can get you to where you need to go. What we do is we make it the gap so big between here and here that you're never going to get to this point unless you get rid of this and let this go. Like in your case, I yeah. Mean, you know, until you actually realize, 
you know, because you were lucky enough to, to be able to afford that. But there's yeah. people that can't. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I, I could have easily won. If I would have gotten laid off at that point, I think I would have went on foreclosure. That's right. Fast, and so that's you know? what I mean. When, when you when you now because you understand that and you say, hey, look, dude, how many how many months can you afford to do this? Yeah. How many? And so when we ask them those questions and we pull that out of them and and you know the, while people are talking about the kids and football and uh, we're immediately negotiating on the house because yeah. let's not let's not bullshit ourselves. The reason they're calling us is because they want to sell a house, and we respect them. In my office, we respect people enough to understand that the reason they're calling and not calling a realtor ninety percent of the time is because they need help. They, and they need cash fast. And they, yes, and a lot of times, too, so one of the things is like, you know, what's preventing you from selling this house? And, and well, you know, where, where are you going? Where, where are you headed to? Well, I don't know. Well, I guess we'll figure that out when we sell it. It's like, no, 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 no. How about this? If you decide to sell to me, I'll give you $2,000. So we'll give them $2,000 up front. Now, I don't give it to them until we have clear clear title. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, I'm risking because they could literally say. I literally had that question today from my friend in Florida who's flipping houses in Tampa and Miami. And he said, do you give them money before they move out? And I said, I personally don't do it. I do. But I do a lease, con a lease contract. Or lease back. Uh, a lease back yeah. contract. Uh, and, and, and we've done that too. But I found that if we get them... So first of all, if you and I went head to head, I would beat you. Right. Does that make sense? I don't, I don't, so I don't doubt it. I, well, and the reason why... No, but I mean that from a standpoint of... Think of it what you're saying and what I'm saying. Yeah. You're saying that if you sell me the house... No, no, no. He's going to take you. your offer. That's right. Because I'm saying, look, I'm willing to risk on you. Yeah. I believe in you and I'm going to go with you. So I'm glad I'll I didn't do that with that lady that died. <laughs> <laughs> she was going nowhere. Hey, man, I don't and know then, what and, I would have done there. And there's risk in it, of course. No, there's you know, a risk. There's a risk, but you know, I, I learned that to the point where... But by the, by the way, I still lost money on that deal because I had already done a survey. Uh, yeah, maybe if um, I invested the money in the survey on them, then that would that would have... That would have even... You would have kept her deal. alive? No, 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 no. <laughs> if I, let's, say, let's say, no, this is keeping in mind that the lady survives, right? Because I'm, I'm, the only risk you're taking is from that buyer not showing up. Right. Mm -hmm. And But and, you don't have that. Right. Because if you have money and they took it, then you now can go to court over it. You right. Know? So the reality is they're selling to me or, or they're not selling it at all. Right. Now, yeah, because you, you put a cloud on the, on the, on the title. Yeah, and, and, and the second part is, you know, the reality is if, they're, if the reason that I'm giving the money is to move, I'm going to watch for that. Right. Right. And And – you know, so I'm not going out and giving two thousand dollars to everyone. I'm just saying that's what the reason there. That that's the problem. That's the you know what we need to solve. If you solve the problem, you buy the house. Yes. And when I started figuring that out and over and over and over, like you know, forget about buying houses. How many problems can we solve? Yes. And the, the moment we started solving problems was when it just started popping. And and that's something that some people don't get. I mean, this is. Some people think this is a real estate business. This is a people's business. I yes, mean, you are, oh, yeah. you are solving people's easy. problems, yeah. and the the price is you get a house, right? Right. That you can now market because this is the difference, right? What so what keeps the regular seller from getting rid of the property and making those ten, twenty thousand bucks? Well, they don't have the network. They don't have the know how. They Realtor, have no idea. They have no idea that they can do that with that property. Yeah. A lot of actually, a lot of the good wholesalers. You know how they started when they were trying to get rid of their own house. Yeah, that's what I mean. That's is, that's what I meant the, when they, I told yeah, you. Yeah, they go through you, the process on the seller side, and then they say, you know what? Well, okay. no, they had they had their backs against the walls. They were getting foreclosed on. How can I dump this thing? And they're like, how can I get creative to go and move it? Because yep. that's, that's at the end of the day, what you're looking yep. for is to move the property. Oh, I've sold to other other investors because I couldn't move it. And I said, oh, let me clarify what I mean by that. I'm, I'm talking about a house I already flipped. Right. I fixed up, put my personal money into it. Besides my investment that I, because at that point, not only did I have my hard money loan and everything into it, but I also had months that I paid on that loan on Right. So it's now I'm out cost. of pocket. Right. And so at that point, I'm like, you know what? Uh, screw it. Screw I'm gonna it. let somebody make money. I'm I'm literally gonna get out for what I owe my seller. Forget about what you know what I owe. What, what you I, lost. What I lost. Yeah. I just need to get. If out you're making X here and you're losing a little bit here, who cares? Man? Right. Just move on. Yeah. It's it, and that's why you, if you treat it as if you treat it as a not you mentioned earlier as a hobby. If you're just in, investing, well, of course that hurts. You know because you're doing one or two deal a year, so you don't the, the two that you're gonna do, you shouldn't go and lose money on. Right. But if you're doing it as a business or if you're talking about 
scaling it, you know, you need to understand that you don't hit home runs every time. No, no. I was commenting to you that you should shoot for base hits all the time, but if you swing and get on base, you'll bring people home all the time. Yeah. Um, and every now and then you get you, you get home runs. Yeah. And, and and so in fact, if you get people on base and you hit a home run, automatically That's it's it. a grand slam. It's a grand slam. So That's correct. You know, we make fifty, sixty thousand dollar assignments. We don't do it every time. You know, like right. I said, we, we they come, but yeah. they don't. They're not coming every day. But if you're not swinging, if you're not there, if you're not in the races, you're never gonna do it. So the way you get those really big, I, you know, we were talking with a friend how a lot of these gurus talk about. The one deal that they made a hundred thousand dollars on, and they bring that deal over and over and over and over. It's the only the reality one is because the only one they did at that point. Yeah. And when I say at that point, at that price point, the reality is the rest of us, the real world, operates on ten thousand, fifteen thousand dollars. Five thousand. We could do twenty thousand dollars assignments, and we do actually. You know, thank God we're doing a lot more of them now. Um, but if you wanted to make bigger checks, there's other ways to make bigger checks. Yeah. Like flipping. You know, you want to make big checks. Oh, the, the, the guy that flips the house, he's getting oh, the my, bigger check. Yeah, the guy that I sell the houses to, they're going to make, you know, another... 60, 70. Right, right. Uh, no, nah, but, but what is he taking? He's taking the biggest risk. Yep. Correct. Right? Right. right. Now, I'm I'm okay if I'm only making, I don't know, five to $10,000 a month. Right, uh, not a month, but a, 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 a deal. A, a deal. A signing. But I'm doing ten to twenty. Well, and <laughs> I'll put it to you yeah. a different way. And this is where I learned the velocity of money, right? So, if I'm making ten thousand dollars, but I'm making it in two weeks, and the guy that bought it from me is gonna make sixty thousand dollars, but it takes him six months to get it rehab, put it on the market, right. close it. Who made more money? You do. Because I made ten thousand in two weeks. End of the time. Right. And so they don't make any more of that. And, and it's know? not that I don't want him to make money. I want him to make as much money <laughs> right. because then he goes out and buys another house for me. So I'm never, I'm not of the scarcity mentality. I'm, I'm in the abundance mentality. Yeah. So I want him to make as much money as possible. And I hope that when we give him numbers, we give it to him in a, in a way where, look, this is reality. It's you want to tweak win-win. it however you want. Yeah. So that way they can go out and make money. But if, you know, again, my, my, my point of view is always if you're, if you're, Looking for big checks, put yourself in front of the opportunity to make big checks. Yes. You know, you can't you can't make fifty dollars an hour working in a ten dollar an hour job. Even if you're the best ten dollar an hour employee, you're still a ten dollar an yep. hour employee. Go put yourself in a in a fifty thousand dollar or a fifty dollar an hour job. Now, get your way there. So if you're just starting out, like anything, if you're just starting out in real estate investing, the best advice I'm gonna give you right now is Go put yourself in front of the people that are doing deals. Just sit around them. Just listen. I mean, you know, I, I, I'm. If you had a, you have an audience, but you know, before this, remember, I remember back in the day when I started. It was hard, man. There was nowhere to learn. No, I mean, it, nobody talked. I don't to know how was... many times I went to some seminar here in Houston, local. You know, nothing, nothing from one of these big schools or whatever. And I would just ask somebody, and say, hey, man, will you mind if I hang around with you? Or, you know, right. can you show me the ropes or whatever? And the answer was always, I don't have enough time, you know. Thank yeah, you, and you know. same answer I would, give, <laughs> I would give you. But but I would tell you this, you know, that whenever I'm around, in, in a, especially in a setting where there is opportunity to network. I mean, nowadays, Jesus Christ, you can No, have, there is more networking. I mean, you can network every night. No, you, you can, can network, network every night. You can network yourself to broke. Yep. If you yeah, and that's what we're saying. I mean, people are paying all these absurd amount of monies out of their credit cards and getting all crazy. Oh, I need education, I need education, education. Because they at become, one point you need to start. No, doing what happens? Something. This is what happens, and I've been around that environment for a long time because I I take a lot of self development yeah. uh, classes and things, like, and I've paid the ten thousand dollars and all of that. Yeah, but, me too. But some people become seminar junkies. Junkies, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and yeah. they they get their fix. And they're oh I'm, I'm about to go kill it I'm gonna go buy this house and and or do my marketing or whatever and then two weeks from there their energy levels come down and There's they don't another email for another seminar they don't have a way <laughs> yeah they don't have a way to stay motivated and another seminar comes through oh yeah I gotta go learn this one now you know California and, hell yeah yeah no or you know <laughs> whatever. I just got back from California <laughs> Hey man, any I'm that sucker. brother, any excuse I can make to go to California, you go. I'll take oh, that man. trip. San Diego's Especially beautiful. if I'm going to a seminar, you know, oh, yeah. nothing it's wrong with that. Right? It's a write-off, right? It's a write-off. Yeah. It's a hundred percent write-off. Yeah. It's, it's education. Yeah. Um, but 
but I'm not talking about us, man. We we pay for education, but we're making money for education, okay? It's the people that are not making a dollar, right? Mm -hmm. And they stay hooked on yep. on on Seminars. on becoming junkies. It's no different than, than a drug addict, right? No different, because they need that next seminar, and the, and the 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 higher the debt on their credit card is, the more gratification they get. I've talked to them. I, wow. I know how they behave. Uh, unfortunately, I actually had to tell a lady one day. I said, "Listen, you need to stop, man. Yeah, you need to go take action. Right? Because you there's nothing is going to happen from the seminars if you don't go out there and take action. Right? It's that simple. So I tell people, hey, invest in yourself. Go, you know, go to Tony Robbins. Go to uh, Success Resources. Go to all these things that are." You know, empowering and, and giving giving people the tools because the school system is not set up that way. No, the school system is set up to like fail people. Yeah, become uh, become professional employees. Yeah, oh, and they're 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 just producing yeah. uh, employees, right? right. Exactly. But they're also they're also uh, tailoring you to for failure. They're not tailoring you for success, right? Because everything is a pass or fail, pass or fail. Right. There's not a succeeded or go do it again sort of deal no you fail man you're not worth it you know you know what i mean right. yeah so this is what you get from all these seminars and people say oh my god you're gonna go pay twenty five thousand dollars for tony robbins those are probably the best twenty five thousand oh, dollars that you will ever invest that change your life if you take action afterwards. It, I, hey dennis i'm a i'm a i am a firm believer that it, because I pay for one of those seminars, we are where we are yeah, today. Me, me too. I haven't, you know, I haven't been to seminar. I haven't been to Tony's, but I've listened to everything he puts out there. Yeah. But I've been to similar, similar um, teachings like Tony, and yeah, I mean, it was a life changing event. It yeah. was. It was literally where. I guess the, the the important thing is at what stage in your life or career you go and spend that money. Well, no, there, I don't think there is a right. The, there is no right or wrong. So for clarity, I think to his point, and I think we're missing it, is at Tony's event and a lot of those events, they're, they teach you how to take action. Mm -hmm. in, in, I think in real estate seminars, you primarily get education on how to do it, right? Mm -hmm. But There's they no don't action. push you to take action. Yeah. And, and in Tony's event, I mean, the fire walk, everything, that's yeah. the first day. You know, if you're there, that's the first day is a fire walk. So it's not like you wait till Sunday that you're hyped up. You know, first day, go walk on fire kind of thing. And it's it's to, to make you understand it, it's about action taking, right? To, to not have fear. But, um, you know, as far as to your point, I think you're right. I mean, if you're out there, you want to get in real estate, there's so much free education. YouTube. On YouTube. Oh, my God. My, my, you know, one of the people that are my mentors, which is Sean Terry and, and Ken Clothier, but Sean Terry particularly, he gives you so Is that much the one you share the video on today? On how to find leads or something like that? No, that was Justin Colby. He's another one. That's another good one. I watched it, and it was good. Yeah, it was really good. It was really good. He mentioned, like, two websites that I didn't know of. Yep. Really okay. good. Rebo Gateway and, uh, yeah, List Source. But the bottom line is there's a lot of free education nowadays where you can go out and get it. So stop, you know. In fact, I think you guys have a service, right, where you guys, you guys will do the marketing for you. You actually, like, not saying marketing, but you do the mail-outs for So it. direct mail-out, uh, basically... We wanna, we want to service the seasoned investor, the okay. one that knows what he wants. I want to send 500 letters to this particular zip code, and this is the list, right? Right. Don't get me wrong. If somebody comes here and says, "Guys, can you help me build a list?" They're gonna provide that service at a different cost. Right. But yes, we can tell you, hey man, you should be. Now we don't guarantee anything because well, if 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 they if they listen to the video, because that was what you talked about, the video that I shared this morning, if you listen to the video, it tells you what exactly yep. what list to well, you need to where to go pull it, go do it, get that list. It, it costs money, right? So they cost some money for buying the list. Get the list. Get it out to a list service company that does mail-outs for you, like you guys. Right. And if not, there's other companies out there. A I know bunch of companies. Impact, imp, uh, go Big Printing is the one we use, GoBigPrinting.com. And uh, you pay them a dollar a letter. As a, you could do it yourself, but I think why it's cost you almost the too same much amount time, of money, man. right? It, it, it so just... if you have twenty five dollars to put into a seminar, you have twenty five dollars to put into yeah. you know paying somebody. Uh, yeah. Oh man, you put a twenty five thousand dollar mailing campaign, you're gonna get some house. Oh, <laughs> if, if you, I, I guarantee, you're an idiot. If you put twenty five thousand dollars into a mailing campaign, I 
Guarantee we, you we, will we, had, we had a couple of guys um, last year that came over and put a $5,000 campaign. How many houses did they get? They got... Uh, I would say six. Six, six houses? Or seven. And it was, what, about thirty to $40,000 worth of assignment fees? Yeah, at least. And they rehabbed some and flipped them. And they... And they kept some for they rentals. They kept so some for rentals. I don't know what the rate on return because I haven't sat down and, and yeah, drawn do numbers math, on it. Yeah. Do the math. I wish you that one day they do a case study. If it's thirty thousand and five thousand dollars in investment, that's uh, no. But then, they, but the, yeah. But then they flip the house. One of those oh. houses they flipped and made a profit, and, and then they have one rented and they're getting cash flow. So it keeps. I so mean, here's that a five thousand. Here's a question. That five thousand dollars is going to keep producing from. Are here they doing to, more I deals? Mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're flipping like three right now. Three right okay. now. Yeah. Oh, they went from zero to flipping three at a time now, which is a good. How, because how do you do that? If they see that I can do it, what's going to keep them from doing it? Yeah. If they go, because now they start believing in themselves. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, it's that whole first check thing, right? That you don't believe, that happened to me. The reason I paid for a mentor is I didn't believe there was an actual, oh shit, I cashed yeah. a check on this. This right. is real, you know? So we were talking about earlier how people post checks on, on Facebook. And, I, you know, I, I have my mixed feelings about it. But one of the things I will say that I see as a, as a the only reason I see as a benefit is it, w- it should help other people motivate them and, and see that it does really work. Yes. Right? So that's the one thing I would say from all that that I would say that, you know, I'm not a big fan of it, but I will tell you that. If, if the reason, if somebody sees that check that somebody else got, right, and, and that is what gets them motivated and it gives them the validity that, you know what, this this really does work, then so be it. That's a good thing. Well, right? I think so, for the most part. I just think them, most of the time they're doing it because they're cocky. <laughs> but no, no, no. I think for the most part, most of the guys that I've seen, like, sponsor ads on Facebook that got checks, or they're selling something. They're selling a seminar. They're selling a class. Um, this is how I do. They're selling their system on how they do things, and that's why they need to post that validation, right? Right. They, this is how much money I made on one deal. You can do it because it's true. If they made it, you can do it as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm for dude. I'm not the sharpest tack in the in yeah the, in the toolbox. And and with that said, you know, I mean, <clears throat> there's there's look. Reality is that's why I said one of the things is persistence and tenacity. You don't have to be very smart. Yeah. You just have to be a good people person. You have to be self-driven and motivated. And you have to have the ability to withstand when there is nothing. You know, mm-hmm. because, you know, just like my, as much as I like to tell you that I got into it and immediately, I mean, what people forget is I was in it for 15, 16 yeah. years. Yeah, on the, on, a, on the other side yeah, of the business. Yeah, not doing two deals a year you right. know, when there's no reason for that. And then people ask me, well, what took you so long? I was, I was scared. You know, it was a pussy. So maybe you didn't know that you could do no, it. No, I, I knew. Mean, I knew because I worked for a lot of investors that did it. Okay. I worked, you know, so it wasn't that I didn't know. I knew, and that's the problem. Is that up? Uh, he fear. said it. I didn't. Okay, guys. <laughs> so, so um, I know that this is kind of like dragging, but um, I've got one. But this is a good show, man. This it's is a lot of wealth of information. I know. So I know. People guys, will be able to get a lot of. You questions. have no idea what all the information that uh, Alex is sharing. Is what is worth, um, and he doesn't even bought me a beer yet. So not yet. <laughs> Imagine if he buys me a beer, though. That, I'll tell him the real that's stuff. That's next. <laughs> that's what he. That's what he tells us the truth. <laughs> so, uh, so, but I gotta, I gotta ask this question, Alex, and, and you, you know, answer however you feel comfortable. Nowadays, what what are you doing? What what is Fast House Bars doing to get those leads? You know, to to be able to, you know, generate uh, what you're generating. I could tell you, but then I have to kill you. You have oh. to kill him. No, you know what, dude? The truth is, there's no secret. Yeah. The the secret is there is no secret. The twenty five thousand dollars seminar, all they're gonna do is tell you the exact Take same action. thing everybody else does, which is mail out. Okay. I do a lot of internet marketing, and and you guys have tried it. It's a hit or miss. You know, you yeah. could, it could bank. You know, it could bankrupt you. Or it could bankroll you. So it goes in both directions. The thing I'll tell you about the internet is you got to be 100% committed. You got to be fighting for the top. You got to be ready to cut big checks, you know. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, we I spend like $30,000 in marketing plus or minus a month. So, but I do everything that everybody else does. I mean, I've done banded signs. I've done, uh, you know, do a lot of networking. Um, I, 
my cost per buy on this i'm gonna get into real technical stuff here and and you know this might blow for, for the newer people it's not gonna make any sense but my cost per buy is about thirty five hundred dollars a buy okay so you know if i'm spending thirty five hundred dollars i should get a buy right period and sometimes it's less, sometimes it's more, and that's kind of equal. Yeah, that's right? how you even it out. And that way you scale. And you if you want 10, ha 10 houses, then you go 35,000. 35, right. So <clears throat> we're getting to the point where we're getting a lot of self-generated leads, and some of these are, you know, internet leads and stuff. But the bottom line is, when I say self-generated, I was talking about driving for dollars. We still drive for dollars. We still hunt our own deals. We do a lot of networking. We try to work with a lot of realtors. I mean, go out there and talk to realtors. Um, biggest bang for your buck is going to be direct mail if you if you find lists and do direct mail um that's a good way of getting into it. in fact to this day we do still you know i just paid for like three or four thousand mail outs to go out this friday so um so basically yeah. you're doing everything i mean yeah, yeah, yeah. he's a oh, yeah. he cover yeah. all the bases no yeah if, if, for, for what i do you have to right I yeah mean, i'm not yeah. looking for one deal i'm looking for 10 deals exactly right. and and you know it, and in multiple cities too because you know yeah i haven't i mean that's just in houston <laughs> so we do the exact same thing in other cities now we're just like everybody else right you you get into doing it i was lucky enough to be around the right people and around the right time and everything where i, I got into it and i had immediate results now I also will tell you, I could do a lot more deals if I took a lot less commission or a lot less assignments. Uh, yeah, we're, but we're trying to be str stringent on being a ten. At the end of the day, if why make less right. to make more deals, right. which is more work, but more paperwork, it's more follow ups, is and you'll well, get more time. And, and, you'll and, get the same. At the end of the month, you'll get the same. But let me, the let, same me clarify, let me clarify this thing. If I was to start all over again, I'd do it all over again. And then this is the advice for your for your, for your uh, audience. If you're just starting out, don't try to make $10,000 times. Don't try to make $20,000 times. Yes, you want to get there, but that was the whole concept of the base hit, right? Why don't you go out and try to make a $5,000 assignment or a $3,000 assignment? You're moving fast. Yeah. Those will move well, fast. And learn. And, and it'll learn. get you the education. Yeah. Which you, I right. Mean, you'll and, you'll, and you'll get the check. That what they call the oh shit check. You know, oh shit, it works. Yeah. You know? So once you have that, then you go to the next step and you go to the next step and you'll get better. You'll get more confidence. You'll, get you'll figure things out on your on your way there. You know, right. that's that's pretty much what we did. And we started our first mailing campaign was a $400 campaign that we just sat down together one day and was like, man, we need to go buy houses ourselves because the, the, the well, MLS screw the wholesalers, right? No, no. The MLS. <laughs> no, I hate the wholesalers. Yeah, the thing is, is dried up. The, 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 the MLS was dry, right. and and, no, the, I know. and yeah. everything from wholesalers was overpriced. So we just became wholesalers not because we wanted to. By necessity. It's because By we necessity. had to. Yeah. Right? And and all we said at the time was we were flipping. I think it was three houses that we found through the MLS. Mm -hmm. I just told Danny, "Says, hey man, let's let's sit down here. Let, let's listen to bigger pockets and." And maybe a couple of other gurus out there. Which, by the way, it's another great source of information, biggerpockets.com. Go ahead. Yeah, and and a lot of source for networking as well. Yes. Uh, there's a lot of people that are doing great things that are associated and affiliated with Bigger Pockets, and I've met a f bunch of people that are part of our business today thanks to Bigger Pockets. Yeah. yeah. So we sat down one day and we said, you know what, man? Let's just put... Let's just do a 400 letter campaign. Cause we didn't know what the right. right number was, right? Right, right, right. All we knew was that oh, dude. if you send 500 letters, you're going to get so many calls. And then out of so many calls, you're going to get a house. And that's what we were looking for, one house. We were looking for 10 houses. Dude, I got the craziest story for you. So, go ahead, shoot. So we go 400, 400 letters, $400 basically. Yeah. And a year later, we're doing 18,000. You know, so... <laughs> dude. I've got the easiest point of entry for anyone in the world, and and you know I they told it to me. I'm like, man, am I really seriously paying you for this shit? So, <laughs> and I, but I will tell you, and and I paid six thousand dollars for this. If you just so anyone that owns a house and you live now, this is technical. This is like go do it right now. Right. Anyone that owns a house where you live in the neighborhood you live, don't you know the price point of that neighborhood? Yeah. So you know what that house is worth, what the neighbor's house should be worth, da da da. So, if you want to start in real estate today, right now, you literally can start by going into HCAT, pull the whole neighborhood, the entire neighborhood, and start mailing out to that neighborhood. And you'll get a lot of return mail. You get a lot of people that don't want to sell, and you'll get, get a lot of hate calls. But that doesn't matter. You got to go through that because you're mining for gold, and you got to do go through a lot of dirt to get to the golden nuggets. Yeah. But 
If you just started with your neighborhood, there's probably what, 2,000 houses in each neighborhood? So if you did that and you drove for dollars in your same neighborhood and you went out and bought 100 bandit signs or 50 bandit signs and put them in the same neighborhood you live in, the same place you drive by every freaking right. day, you go to your, you know, your whatever convenience store you go to, you put a bandit sign there, you go to the grocery store, you put a bandit sign there, you go to the pharmacy, you put a bandit sign there, you just blanket your neighborhood. Yep. Yeah. I promise you in 30 days you would buy a house. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. In fact, I challenge you to do it. Let it me is. ask you a question. So how do you get a lot of the questions we get from people that uh, do bandit signs, for instance, which we didn't do for a long time. We did a few, but mm -hmm. we focus more on the direct mailing uh, portion of it. Right. Uh, although right now we're going all in. We're doing direct mailing, bandit signs, and billboards in the same area. Yep. There you uh, go. I mean, because I want just doing it in a bigger scale. I just want them to see yeah. me everywhere, right? right? So I want them to buy from same as cash. Um, what do you do? Uh, somebody asked me this question not long ago, with like when you get calls from the city or yep. or, or from the cops <laughs> saying, "Hey, man, I'm gonna I'm gonna find you and take you to jail because you got the city flooded with bandit signs." We you see know? another of your signs. We're gonna find you. <laughs> um, so I don't know. I'm sure they have it in Apple. Okay. So, um, God, I wish you know. I, I, whoever's going to listen to this is just going to find a, a, a really good secret. Good, good information. So I'm going to share it with you. You go to. In my case, I use a Samsung, so I go to the Google Play Store, and I'm trying to find it so that I could tell you for a fact. But it's called um, Burner. It's called Burner. Burner. That's the name of it, right? Okay. And um, if you use Burner, it's an app. You download it on your phone, and it allows you the ability to buy another phone. Oh, yeah, okay. And so what it okay. does is... It, Redirect the number. Yeah, it, it, people call you, and it your phone rings, but under the burner app. Right. But here's the best part. If the city calls you, if you take the call, and it's the city, you literally just don't even talk. You just look out and you look at the number and you say burn it and you hit burn it. We we gotta do a show on this one. How to avoid the city calls one oh one using burner by Alex. And <laughs> <laughs> that you don't wanna do that, but um, when when you hit burn the cat you, is out of the cage. No, but it's true. I mean come on how many people out there newbies? Because what happens to a newbie? A newbie goes, I need to do this as cheap as possible, which is I need to go buy 50 bandit signs, maybe, which mm -hmm. I tell them, dude, don't, don't buy 50, buy like 500. Um, the, you the, know. The, oh, just real quick, and I'm telling you because I've done it on a large scale, you've got to put 300 signs to get one house. Yeah. So if you have 300 signs, you'll buy a house. That's yeah. usually the, the, the way I see it. Uh, yeah, that's good, good, good information to have. Good I'm advice for the ones that are, because you do 50, what are you getting? No, nothing. Nothing. So that is the problem, right? And then, but guess what call they get? The city. The one from the city. And so it's a five hundred dollar fine. And then per sign. And then what happens? They get freaked their out. Their dreams about becoming wholesaler go right. out the window. They freak out. Because yeah. they're like, Hell no, I don't want to get in trouble with the city. Right. I don't want to go to jail or wanna be fined five hundred dollars I don't have because for the most part that's money they don't have. Mm -hmm. Right. Um so it's good that you brought you, that you are telling the audience about how to handle those objections because those are objections that we all go through. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and um, and the math is a numbers game. Right. Like on the letters, on the bandit signs, is the same. Right. And and you place them strategically uh, w everywhere you can to where you are the guy they remember every time they see one of those bandit signs. And and what I'll tell you is you know sweat equity because um, one of, one of, a good friend of mine who's uh, <laughs> he's actually a seminar guy he, he okay. teaches seminars here in town but he he has a great philosophy he has a great way of looking at it and i've never seen it before till he pointed it out and it, it's you got to spend 50 to 60 hours or thirty five hundred dollars to buy a house mm -hmm. so what that means is you got to spend you know you either got to spend your time right at, at least 50 hours to, to in it's in, time in or money I mean. right in marketing mm -hmm. Or you got to spend thirty five hundred dollars. And those numbers don't lie, man. No. Because they no, 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 no. I, I don't. He probably I, didn't come up with it. He just figured I, it out. I don't know how he came up with it. He's really numerical. He's real analytical, so he probably figured that out. But I'll tell you right now. I just got back from San Diego again, 
and people from Indiana, people from Chicago, people from uh, everywhere, DC, people from uh, Tampa, people from California. Everybody's spending between three to five thousand dollars a deal. Yeah. And so if you're a newbie, you're gonna buy houses real cheap because you're willing to put the sweat equity into it. But as you start scaling it up, and you can't, I can't go on every deal. I can't go on every appointment. I can't do every letter. You need to start sacrificing time for money or vice versa, right? So the more, for those of you that are working in office, like, man, I don't have 50 hours a week. No, no. I get it. But you got a good paying job. You got some money. And, you know, like you mentioned, you, you don't have to go spend $3,500 on the very first deal. Go spend $500 in mail outs. You know, you talk about 400 letters that bought you a house. That's what you do. You start putting $500 this week. Five, but what people think is, is you don't, it's not a, it's not a, it's not a shotgun approach. You don't just try everything. Get really good at one thing yeah. or get really good at one area. I got real bad at the internet part of it and I stopped. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because that was about to yeah. bank, take us bankrupt. Right. And you know what? We wholesale the house, we recuperated the money, and then I called Juan yeah, and I said, dude, you need to stop that. Because but you, you bought four houses this Saturday and it was from direct mail. So you got really good at direct yeah, mail. Yeah, yeah. We got very good at direct mail. Well, I did and he did because he's the one that writes the letters. You cry when you read <laughs> one of them. Uh, but uh, I get all sentimental. I just tell him, hey, man, put this much money in it. And then he goes and and he does it. He sends me the letters, and I look at it. I was like, I was like, wow, should I, I sell I you my, sell house? my house? Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> Ricardo sends a sends a letter to his um, wife uh, for Valentine's. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we're about to deploy a bunch of bandit signs, and we're about to start uh, loading up on billboards. What, also, what give you some advice? Put try to make six, seven numbers, because I've done that. Okay. And, and so because if you put them all under one number, and the city catches you, you just you got to burn that number. You just screwed yourself out of a thousand signs. Mm. So if you do it in hundred, hundred, every hundred signs, change the phone number. So they catch you with that one. Yeah. You bring that number, but you still have the other nine hundred. Well, out. too late. <laughs> so <laughs> we're gonna try. So his, those. now you know. <laughs> hey, I'm learning. Hey, he's learning. Hey, yeah, I'm it's, learning because hey, we don't know it, it all. And all. it is <laughs> gonna be learned. I mean, this is a perfect example for people out there. If you or if we were to sit down and analyze what we're going to do next down yes. to the details yes. and we'll never do anything we'll right. never do anything we just got to go out there try it, it worked it didn't work we'll go we tried the uh, internet thing at that time it slightly worked but we we're spending a lot of money then we'll try again at a later date but i mean you got to keep no we're trying, trying right now and and, and and doing things that that at least will get you somewhere or get you to act well, on the, something. The, the thing that Tony Robbins says that you probably heard of is um, action, uh, motion creates emotion. So if you're, if you're taking action, you're actually creating energy and you're creating feelings and emotions, right? right? So even if you're failing Man, get after it fast, fail fast, and move forward. Yeah. Oh, because yeah. you know, otherwise, is is not gonna happen. Absolutely. If you're always worried about, is I tell people, don't step over a hundred dollar bill to pick up pennies. Yep. You know, if you're gonna do this, hey, take a risk. You lost five hundred bucks, oh well. You lost five thousand, oh well. But you kept on doing it. Well, the two thousand dollars that I talk about, right? Isn't that a risk? I mean, that's a huge risk. Oh, it's but a huge you, risk. I get so many more deals out of it. Right. That if they do ever screw me, I've already made so much money yeah. to pay for that one that I, I mean, I would double down on it. Right. Because now I figured out, hey, every ten deals I get screwed one, so I'm making a hundred k, and I lose two thousand. And you haven't lost. Me up. You probably haven't lost the two thousand yet. Thank God. Good. So, so the, but that is a risk you're willing to take, right? Oh and, yeah. And and, I, and, so. and there's people that are not maybe because they don't have the experience. They right. maybe if they hang around with you or whatever, and they say, "Oh, Alex, I figured out how you you know how is how it is that you bring your buyers to to your your sellers to the table to sign, uh, unless they died." Right, like it happened to me, but uh, no, literally, man, I was ready to close, and I get a call, and I'm sorry, we're not gonna be able to close, and I was like, why? Well, the lady just passed away. Wow. Well, let's go chase her sons, right? They're motivated as well. Well, they didn't want anything to do with it, so beautiful house is still out there, so can't buy it. Uh, and it was a. Is it vacant? Call. It was. If it's vacant, but it was. Take a, it. Take it under. We can talk about yeah, that. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that later. I just kind of caught maybe myself. there's something we don't <laughs> yeah, know. Wait we can a do. <laughs> uh, maybe we can work something together uh, on a, on that deal. But um, but yeah, sure, it's vacant. And at that point, if I would have paid her money, 
then I would have really lost my money on that case. Right. Because I didn't know what to do, right? Yeah, but uh, how many other deals did you do that you made money on? Oh, no, no, no. Most of the deals we made money on. And, and um, we always talk about the bad ones, right? Yes. And what's funny is we don't talk about the other nine deals a month that we made a shitload of right. money on. So, right. You know, it, it, it... I guess the reason we talk about the bad ones is just to make people Show aware of that. Show battle scars. I look at my scar, you know, look at... I got a, a shot to the Yeah, yeah. No, it's just know? to make people aware, you know, that yeah, this and, is not a fairy tale. This is not a, oh. you know, you came here and uh, I'm you know Don King Kong of wholesaling and I just wholesale everything and I'm a multi-trillionaire like uh, some guy on the internet out there <laughs> was just selling classes or whatever, but th there's work behind it. Oh, yeah. It reminds me of American Ninja Warrior, you know, where you have to train <laughs> all the damn time and, you know, you train, 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 and then you get that one at bat and you're almost there and then you get to the wall and you fall yeah. off. Oh, shit. And no, that, that thing that comes in and boom, he's yeah, you in the head, right? You got to start all over again, but you got to keep doing it. And what happens is once you build the capacity to do it, then you can start doing it on a regular basis. And, you know, until you get that first that first one, that's why, I, the, you know, I, I hope you guys took that from me today. That if you want to go out and do a deal tomorrow, it's extremely easy. Mail out to your neighborhood. Go put balance signs in your neighborhood. Go drive around those, the, the block in your neighborhood. You know, you can YouTube all this stuff. You can buy a house in 30 days if you put your... your and, and you don't even have to spend 50 hours a week. You just have to spend 50 hours. Yes. So if you spend the next three, 30 days and you gave it literally two hours a day or you spend three hours one day, two hours, especially on the weekend, like best days to drive for dollars is garbage days. You know, because if the, somebody didn't put the garbage out for, for that... The day, house is vacant. The yep. house is vacant. So especially if you look right now in the summertime, right? The grass is high. That's or he another... forgot. <laughs> got drunk the night before. Didn't wake up early in the morning. That, that has happened to me. That has happened to me plenty of Mondays. Yeah. <laughs> so, but if you do that, I promise you, you would buy a house in, yeah. the, next, in the next 30 days. And, and you don't have to spend a, a pay. Well, you have to spend a penny on education. Now, here's what, what you do need to spend money on. <clears throat> And this is where you might have to, you know, partner up with someone. Right. Once you figure out there's a house, you got a hold of the seller, and you don't know how to negotiate it. If you don't buy the house, you just made a ten thousand dollar mistake. Yes. So at that point, get with someone. Try to find someone. Obviously, you guys would do it. I would do it. Call somebody yep. that's already doing deals and say, Hey, I've got a, I got a, I got a buyer. I got a seller. He wants to sell. You know, what do I do? And at that point, we can t either tell you how to do it or a, go out a, a there lot and do of times, it. Alex, that also comes from the abundance mentality because you know that when you partner up and you do deals together and money flows and everything, you know that that's creating more abundance not only for you but for a lot of people. A lot of the people that are trying to get into this business do not have that mentality. No, they don't want scarcity. to share. Right. They got scarcity mentality and they don't want to share anything. Or they don't want to see the next the person next to them succeed for because, whatever I don't know it's well, all. I'll tell you why because the reality is they never done it before and they ne they think that is the last deal they're ever gonna do. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so they don't know when the next deal is gonna happen. It's right? the it's one and of, only. <laughs> right. Yeah. So of course they're gonna have a scarcity mentality because they don't know what the next deal looks like or what the next deal is gonna come. And what they don't realize is they just la literally do the exact same thing all over again. They will get another deal in the next thirty days. And so you people say, why do you get to doing 130 deals a month? By doing one at a time, right? How and do you eat an elephant? Right. So by chewing one bite, one at, a bite time. at a time. And so you just have to do this. You know, I actually had this conversation with my office today. If you guys, you know, I was like, well, we need to put houses on the board. Like, no, you don't. You need to be a great negotiator, right? You don't have to go buy the house every time. We, you, you want to. But if you just focus on negotiating the way that we, you know, that that I taught them, if you just focus on negotiating and follow step by step by step by step, the result is going to be you're going to buy a house. Right. So don't don't try to buy the house. Try to negotiate. Yes. Be a great negotiator. Be a great, you know, help solve. Well, and this has happened uh, to a lot of people and uh, wholesalers, and to us as well. Some people uh, sometimes uh, we go. I'm going to throw myself into that uh, equation. And we put an offer, and then we're just expecting for them to accept it. Oh, yeah. And even if, oh, we couldn't get the house, you know? Oh, and yeah, no, Become dude. creative, you know, hey. No, off. and, you know, you, good point you made. I mean, you know how you buy houses? Making offers. And so one of the things I tell my office is, like, 
you know, you're either pregnant or you're not pregnant. Yeah. There's no, there's, there's no, no in between. Oh, I think she's gonna sign, or I, yeah, I, I got that one. I was like, do you have a signed contract? No, but I know. I said, no, 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 no. No. You're either pregnant or you're not pregnant. Yeah. There's no middle. So if you're not, if you don't have the hardest thing to get in any real estate transaction is the signed contract. Yeah. I have actually literally sat down in front of the seller and give them the pen and direct them to sign the contract because they're in shock. They don't want to, yeah. even though they want to sell, they don't want to sign the paper. They don't want to commit on paper or whatever. Right. And Dennis, I've seen this. He's yeah. like, man, I can't believe how you directed that woman to put that yeah. signature on the contract because you have to literally take them and say, listen, force them into it. I've made a woman cry not long ago and I'm not bragging about it, but I had to go punch her feelings because she was hard hit it and she didn't want to basically accept the so offer I'm, I'm gonna actually show you, you speak about tony robbins i'm gonna yeah. give you an, <laughs> we should charge for this <laughs> hey man five thousand so this is what no, we'll just do kidding. we'll extend it seven more minutes because we're like half an hour past the, the 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 end of the show so i'm gonna end on a good note for you but after what alex is about to disclose you're gonna have to send four five thousand dollar checks one for Dennis, one for Juan. <laughs> Don't send one to me. One for Don't me. Don't send one to I me. I will take Alex's, okay? So, anyways, we'll spend it together later on. But So, this is something that uh, if you ever heard of NLP, yes. if you ever heard of, you know, Tony Robbins talks about it and other people out there, but basically the four personality types, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So, what you ran into there was a social conscious person. Right. So, you have what's called a driver person that's real energetic or like you know I, I describe it as a warrior someone that's real go 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 then you have analytical people who are all about numbers we, we got one of those in this right. office <laughs> so real about numbers they want to see facts they're real fact oriented then you have social people real social conscious kind you know that that um when i say social i mean that you you like to be the center of attention. Right. You like to, to be around things. And it's all about you, 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 or me, 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 me. I right? know a few wholesalers like that. I do too. <laughs> <laughs> and then you, uh, you Nothing have- Nothing wrong. Though. I no, don't no, think no. there is a right and, or wrong person. And you know, it's not, that's just, there's, you can't control that. Yeah. So you have social conscious people, right? Right. Well, what's interesting is everyone has two of those. I'm a driver analytical, right? right? And you know, just, I'm not saying you are, but just for example, you are social and you're analytical. Oh, yeah. also, right? So. You can close social people, no problem. You can close analytical people, no problem. But when you get to a driver, you get to the road just because you were. And vice versa, you're social conscious and you're a uh, driver, right? Well, you guys would never be able to connect and do a deal together because you're literally in conflict with each other. Yeah. And you guys don't even realize that. So what you had there with that lady was she was social conscious. The real trick is learning what personality type you are, what they are, and if you could become them and, again, get into their shoes. You can literally make anybody do whatever you tell them to do. Yep. And mm -hmm. and when you get to the NLPs and all that stuff, that's how you can buy houses over the phone when yeah. you get that deep. And that, you know, I'm getting really deep here. But when I figured that out, that was a game changer for me because it, it, if we're doing it over the phone, imagine how much more you could do sitting there across the table. From oh, it's because his body language right. is, you know, you got 70% right. communication, communication over the body right. and everything else is just uh, visual. Or, and My people have to walk around. I make them walk around when they're negotiating. Because it gets because the energy it, it flowing, yes. right? It Everything, gets the energy yeah. flowing. You put on, on on earbuds and then you just start walking in circles around the office or in the backyard or in the front. You get pumped up, and now you get you get to think. You know, I learned that in network marketing, by the way. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Because I would close people, or not close, but I would bring people onto the team. But it was when I got up and started walking around the, the house, and I just get excited about it because motion creates that emotion, mm -hmm. right? That Tony talks about. Yeah. So, it's you know we brought uh, saludos a uh, uh, Ruben. Yeah, he was. Ruben, listening. he was probably there. Uh, he is our personal trainer for NLP. He comes here to same as cash, and you're more than welcome to come on the next oh, time he comes that. over. Yeah, I would love uh, that. We sit around in the same room. We set everything up. That's why we got the flip charts and all of that, and we we flip chart the, the heck out of this room. And he comes here and gives us uh, two to three days uh, full-blown NLP, and we start negotiating. It's kind of funny because they, they yeah. just start discovering things about yeah, yeah. other people you work with. Yeah, when you role play. Exactly. So, so you know, you, you become aware. Right. And and um, many times I stepped into the deal and I'm not going to mention the names, but there were other people there that were negotiating and they were completely disconnected from the situation just because they were trying to uh, 
please that seller. And it gets to the point to where you have to kind of like shake him up and, and kind of like be a dick, basically, uh, honestly, uh, because some of these people need to be Beep. slapped around. And no, no, it's the truth. <laughs> and that's why this woman, I had to make her cry. Because she was, I was like, okay, listen, if I'm here negotiating this property, I don't want to waste another second from you saying you're not going to sell it. Right. I'm either going to buy it or I'm just going to walk away right, right now. And what do I got to lose? Am I going to see this person again? Probably not. And it sounds, it sounds cold. cold yeah. It sounds horrible. At the end of the day, you're doing them a service. Oh, you know, that's what closed her. That fact that you did that was what closed her because at that point she was... Social conscious people don't want to disappoint other people. And at that point, she was disappointing you. And so when you did that, she's like, oh, I don't want to disappoint him, so I'm going to sign. And that's exactly what ended up happening. But believe it or not, she took a huge monkey off her, of her back. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, my God. They always, you know. And once I'm, you get to hear the stories on why they're getting rid of the property, you're like, oh, my God, and you're here negotiating with me? Right. You should just sign it away, you know, which right. a lot of people do. Uh, but uh, anyways... Man, we're going to have to give it a second round with Alex in a few months. Uh, I think we need to dig more into the foundation. There were some questions that I want to ask Alex, and so definitely, yeah. But this I mean, is what you get when you get somebody that um, has been doing it for a long time. He's been in different uh, parts of the business. From He's been a client. He's been a, a rehabber. He's been a contractor, a foundation guy. Motivated seller. Motivated <laughs> seller. I think we all have been a motivated sellers here at, at any point. Yeah. And then and then now you're wholesaling. So so one more question before we close. What's next after wholesaling? What what is cuz everybody has got some like you were asking me earlier. So why what what's when you too much. what's what's too much? What, what happens um, when you get 100 houses rented or whatever? What is next? I don't know. I know where I want to go when I grow up is what I say, right? Maybe apartment complexes. I want to be an nature. astronaut. I um, wanted to do that a long time ago, but it's I wanted tough. to be a naval aviator. Actually, so it, that is tough. They wouldn't let me on the plane. You had to be a naval aviator before you become an astronaut. Uh, but to become a naval aviator, it ain't that easy. No. <laughs> the the. But uh, what what what's next? I would say I'd probably look at something along the lines of, uh, you know, like private lending. Okay. Um, partnering up with people. We pay ten percent. <laughs> you know? so um you know that or the other thing too i mean just like everyone else at some point start buying houses and keeping them as rentals and and uh you know get to the point where i do it you know i do it part-time and enjoy I, i'll tell you right now man i here's the funny thing and i you know especially being a self you like self-help a lot i i sat down about two years ago and described what my perfect day was and my perfect day is getting up with my family and not having, getting to go to work, not right. having to, getting to go to work. And then after having the right to do what you want, yeah. which is I get you to choose go to, to go to work. Right. I get you, to go to you work. You choose mm -hmm. to get on your car or not get on your car. Right. You don't have to. Right. I mean, don't get me wrong. We all have to do something right. at some point, but it's your decision. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's a perfect day. So I got to, you know, also part of that was getting off early, saddling up my horses, bringing my daughter you know, and some of my friends over to the, to the house. And uh, we just saddled up the horses, started riding from about 4 o'clock till like about 8 o'clock, got off. We ended up barbecuing. I mean, that day was designed. Perfect. That, that day, I, I literally designed that day about two years ago, and it happened. And it happens almost every Friday. Good for because, you. You know, we, we invite people over, and I'm, I'm my wife and I are love to entertain, and, and and you know I love riding horses and just putting all that together. So you know now in in, in my office we have a, a five a five horse barn that we get to ride on. And so you know if you don't design your life, this business should give you. It should be a, a lifestyle driven business. And not you know what? Not only this business, I think. I think any, you're right. business. any business. Yeah, you're right. It should if, be a lifestyle driven business. If you're into Owning hair salons or whatever, you know, whatever rocks your Funny day. Story. I actually have one in my house, so. You know, no, but the, the, the reality is, I, I bet, salon. I bet part of why you're a wholesaler is because you love solving other people's problems. Uh, yeah. It's, it's within you. I've seen it. I've yeah, seen some oh, of yeah. your videos, and I was like, man, this guy is doing it. He understand that if he helps a lot of people get out of their issues or, you know, their right. life. These are life events that 
changes the rest of their lives, you yeah. know. Uh, some people, if they get their houses foreclosed on or whatever, they commit suicide. They they get back into drugs, whatever. And he's helping them move up. Divorce. Oh, we've said. <laughs> those are like, Thank you me. lost your job. Well, let's get a divorce, you know. Because now I was like, did you marry his job so or it, him? You if, know? You, if you ever want to get rid of your wife, just lose your job kind of thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what? I quit. <laughs> yeah. I quit. What do you mean you quit? You tell you your know? boss you're going for a one-month vacation and you tell her you lost your job. And yeah. And you get two for one, right? <laughs> exactly. Hey, man. Although yeah. you, get, you get alimony and child support, so that's a bitch, but. It's kind of funny because when I got laid off, I got back home and she's like, so what are you going to do? She's freaking out, right? I got this high paying job and life is, you know, yeah. perfect or whatever. And I was like, one thing for sure is I'm not going to look for another job. Yeah. And she's like, what? Yeah. I'm not going to look for another job, man. I'm not going to be in this position ever, ever again. again. Yep. I'm going to own my life. And the way I'm going to do it is through real estate because it's what I like. You know, that's your why. Yeah. And, and and what that what I mean by that is if you need to have a why, my wife and my, my mom were my why. Right. When that happened to me, it created the urgency. And so if people ask you know, now that I look back it's like, why didn't I do it before? The answer is I didn't have a reason. You didn't have I, a I, why. I, the, what got in the way of a great life was a good life. Right. And so I had a good life. I mean, I made money in the foundation business. Like I yeah. said, I never, I wasn't like no money. In the you family. didn't have to go cold sailing or right. whatever. I, it wasn't in my, I wasn't even a bit. I mean, you know how many wholesaling seminars I sponsored as a foundation repair company? Oh. We used to pay for them, right? Right. Lifestyles and I mean, I, I don't want to throw names out there, but I paid for a lot of people's seminars. Like, when I said I paid, I sponsored events. Right. So it wasn't never why. So, you know, before you go start getting into real estate and, and spending money and sending out mail and all that, Stop and learn the reason why you your why it. has you to be strong figure, enough to yeah. make you cry. Because if you don't have a why, you're gonna quit. Yes. And if you don't have that why, and the reason why you would not ever go back to work again, if you don't have a you know, but my you know my again my family or you know whatever the reason you find, but it has to be a meaning. It has to be that the day that you don't get that house, the day the house gets you know torn down by the city, the day that. You know, you can't sell that house or whatever. You still get up the next day. Yeah. That's the reason why. If you find that, I guarantee you, you'll make it. Not just in real estate and anything, but particularly in real estate. Because real estate... This is a tough business. Oh, I was going to say, it, real estate, I mean, it's... it's The reality is people don't realize how hard it is um, because it's, it's emotionally draining. You yeah. know, you have some really big highs. You have some really big lows. You're dealing with people with probably their worst case in their life. Oh, yeah. You know, they're, they're going through a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. And if you're not emotionally prepared for it, a lot of times you, you end up taking that home. Yes. And you bring it to your family or, you know, your contractors are screwing you and they, they, they broke into your house. Da, 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 da. I mean, I can give you a thousand stories. There is There, there so. are more excuses is what i call oh, yeah, them you, for you to quit absolutely god's pushing you hey yeah, yeah. i want you to quit i want he's, you to he's, quit he's pushing you hard for you to quit and say you know what i give up i give in whatever it is i'm gonna go back to doing whatever i was doing before right. which is a w2 job or whatnot which i know i can get that's no big deal i actually when i got laid off i got like three good offers yeah, i'm an employable right you're, and, you're and i was like the heck with that i'm not gonna take your job you know even though for a lot of people that would have been a blessing oh yeah for me, it was like, nah, man, not not again. I'm just just gonna pass the the page and and, and move on to real estate full time. And here we are, you know, delivering a service to you guys because this is a lot of valuable information that uh, we just shared today. I'm real glad you guys invited me. I enjoyed it. I, I mean, have me anytime you guys want want more. Let me know. I mean, no, we, there's nothing I love more than hearing myself talk. We we <laughs> we are, no, we are honored to have you on the show, Alex. And yeah, I'm well, sure we will you have much. you again. Appreciate we wanna very much. we wanna thank you. It's two hours, actually three hours of your time because you've been here since uh, three hours ago. Yeah. Uh, so so that tells you guys that it's, it's Monday at 9 o'clock in the evening, and here he is. He does 100 deals a year. I'm pretty sure this year will be a lot higher than that because he just keeps setting his expectations uh, bigger and bigger and bigger. And he's delivering value not only to us because we're learning. We're, we're, I picked up a bunch of things today yeah. uh, from today's show for hanging around with Alex for I a did, little bit. I did from them too earlier. I bet. We are, we are exchanging, uh, <laughs> we're exchanging ideas. and and uh, But you are getting uh, the truth of really what it is that motivates somebody. What do you have to do to get 
started in uh, real estate or, or or to have some success because some people have already gotten started oh, they I, just yeah. didn't get any success because they didn't know how to do it or, or whatever so uh today's show uh is very valuable you should watch this about 10 times <laughs> it's like it's like i read the books man i read books like four times oh, because i read the first oh, one I got, i got some good advice for you on that too. what's what you got real quick i found that kindle so I, I don't read books anymore. I started doing Audible. Okay. Yeah. Just so that you can do them. On Especially with all the driving that we do. That and yeah. you do it on 2X, two double speed, and you just get it so much I, faster. I have to do one and a half. Okay. Two, it's so too much. That, that, and that's good. Well, what I realized. It sounds too funny or what? No, my brain <laughs> my brain can process all that that We fast. all know you're that slow, Dennis. I know. So. I am. But it, I found that Kindle also does. Um, so I like reading. So let okay. me start with that. But I, I started doing Kindle uh, Audible because Audible. it was faster. But I, Kindle came out where you can read the book and it put connects the Audible. You can buy it on the same Kindle. So now as you're reading it, it's putting it out to you. That subconscious oh, mind dude, is just like getting the flooded. The retention levels three times more. Wow. It's unreal. How so much you don't have to read it four times. Yep. You go maybe twice because you're 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 immersed in it you're yeah so you're, you're you can't hear anything but the story you're reading now what do you learn that um i got that from Corey, Corey boltwright from uh he has a podcast i forget the name of that and is. what was that that was self-education and that's what i'm talking about right now yeah right he invested that time into self-education on how do i read better how do i get all because at some point in your life you went through okay i want to just Blow it like up. blow it up i've always been that way <laughs> no but 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 you know a lot of people are not like that i know and, and but a lot of people are not like that and then they get to a point to where they just they and just flourish. you don't have to do it to blow it up you know just for clarity you know it's not what I, I guess one of the big takeaways that says you don't do it to blow it up but you do it because your family deserves it you know? yes do it because you deserve it do it because you need to be a better person do it because you know, you don't have to create an empire. I have a lot of friends who are not looking to have an empire. They're looking to just, you know. Live a good life. Yeah, and, and, and not have, you know, it, there's nothing wrong with living a good life. I, nope. did it, I did it for 16 years, and I could have probably stayed with it. The only reason I had to change was because of my why. But at the same time, you know, don't you don't have to create an empire to use some of the stuff we're teaching. You don't have to take the kind of risk that we take. Right, yeah, um, you could do two deals. I mean, you, you did two deals a year for, a bump very, for, a, for eight years. Yeah, and you made a bunch oh, of I made money. money. Yeah, and made so, money. you know, unfortunately, life happened to you, but, yeah. you know, and-, and No, and unfortunately, well, I'm, <laughs> I'm happy. I was, uh, yeah. I'm blessed that the universe and God took me down that path. Yeah. Otherwise, but we wouldn't be sitting here right now. Yeah, but other people would have never, would never, you know, they can never bounce back from. I know, that. Mm -hmm. I know. That's uh, true. But you know, maybe, maybe other people that haven't been able to bounce back look can look at us and say, you know what? If those guys did it, how come I can't? Yeah, so for sure. For if sure. we can at least give them that hope, yeah. hey, there is hope out there. You just gotta go and take action. Right. Don't get hooked up on the on the on the technicality and all the mechanical. You're gonna learn that along the way. So, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I know we had a few people uh, stayed online for for quite a while, and we, um, bored, them, we bored them to death. Yeah, <laughs> no, the today's show actually uh, Juan was laughing, so it must have been good. He didn't say anything today, though. Uh, that kind of surprised me. We, we we can't ask him today what is he wearing because we're seeing what we're he's seeing wearing. him. Yeah. So. Normally he works from his home. So uh, we always joke around, you know, the first couple of minutes in the program. What is one wearing today? Is he in underwear? Or? What they do is roast me the first two minutes of the show. Why don't you send him a picture one time? Just you. I no, he did. No, he please, did. Don't. Just, he, please him. Pop it up. He did, and you know, then we. I started laughing so hard that I couldn't talk. I mean, this right, guy is amazing. Well, I mean, hell, you, you guys bring it up. Might as well please the crowd, right? So <laughs> That's right. <laughs> So, anyways, guys. Well, thank you guys for having me. I no, really thank you, it. Alex. Thank, thank we appreciate you, Alex. you. We'll we'll see you. By the way, this is the first one we do ever on a Monday. I don't think Mondays will be the day that we officially do our our live show. <laughs> uh, but I see it. I'm good. We will. You will. We will be able to see this in YouTube. Um, edited in probably. I don't know how many weeks is it gonna take you, uh, Juan, to put. This to one, this one's a longer one. 
Yeah, it's like two hours. Well, don't cut anything out. Everything oh, was no. good. No, no, no. <laughs> Everything is good. Yeah. Just make it sound, make it sound really so, good. And, so, and then I will leave this on my page, and you can come back. And, and, and Because there's a lot of valuable information that you probably took 10% of it if you stay with it long enough. Um, and I guess if you're going to take something out of this, it's just take action. Because what you're seeing right here is an action taker who's growing his business massively. Uh, not everybody's gonna get there. We want to be like him when we grow up, and and but that gives us if he can do it, that makes us believe that we can do it as well. Right. So it's he's validity. no, you're trailing the path. So yeah. and you're willing to share a lot yeah. of the things you're doing. There's a lot of people that are not right. because they no, want to keep, I, you know, they want to be know, the gurus. You know it's funny that you say that. Actually, I I I know more people that do that don't. Yeah. So the the good news is is that you know just keep, pay it forward. Yeah. Pay mm -hmm. it forward. You know. Yeah, so if you guys got any questions, you know you can contact me or Dennis, and we'll and, be... And we're going to have Alex, you know... Oh, by the way, Alex, Alex what's your what's your uh, website? That way, if, if website, there is a, a motivated number. seller, if, you, if, if you're if you a motivated seller, and I can't buy your house, Alex will. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I'll give you $2,000. Exactly. No, um, but anyways, we want to make sure that uh, if this gets to a motivated seller that connected with you, uh, you get that lead, and... And uh, where can they get in contact with you? So you can reach me at uh, alex at fasthousebuyers.net. Alex at fasthousebuyers.net. Uh, and I don't know. Do Office number, maybe? Yeah. I'll give, you, I'll give you my number. 832-773-3262. 832-773-3262. Um, you can always, I guess, always call me. Text me is probably the best way. Text me if you have anything you need. Um Again, I, I don't mind giving back. I, I would prefer it to be in, in, a, in a bar. <laughs> but on that note, uh, if you have questions and stuff, you're getting started, you know, I don't have a problem taking some time. To Perfect, guys. Um, and, and by the way, if, if you couldn't get the information for whatever reason, reach out to me. I'm pretty sure I can put you in contact with him, and, and we'll go from there. But um, thank you so much. It's been a, a, an interesting three hours. And man, I'm still full of energy. I could have oh, went another too. hour easily. Yeah. That's funny, but yeah, yeah. But I got so much shit I could. I know, but <laughs> I could talk about. We got we gotta save no, some I, of it, I, so I so it. we can oh. sell some other episodes later on, okay? <laughs> so, uh, so anyways, thanks again to Alex. Thank you so much, guys, it. and uh, you'll have a good night. Right, bye. All right, bye bye. Gracias por escuchar y ver nuestro show renovandoriquezas.com. Búscanos y danos un like y cinco estrellas en YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn y cualquier otra red social en donde puedas encontrarnos.